let's see hello guys i think we're live um just a second hi guys i think we're live uh is the picture looking good for you i guess so anyways um i guess so what's up everybody welcome back to the weekly q a live stream um i think uh, there might have been some technical issues uh, i was just wondering about anyways if you're here for the first time my name is oliver and uh on this channel, we talk about education and early career development in Finland. And uh, during these weekly live uh, Q and A uh, A's, uh, we I answer your most most burning questions about uh, living, studying, and working in Finland. And uh, how these live streams work is that there is a Google form linked into the description description box below. Uh, if you go all the way down the description box and uh, you will find a Google form link between two yellow exclamation marks. And uh, if you guys want me to answer your questions live, uh, please post your question into the Google form. Uh, this is because if you post your question into the, into the live chat, which gets pretty busy at times, I will most likely miss your question. So uh, if, if and when you post your question into the Google form, I will be able to go through the questions uh, in a first come first serve basis. Um, before we start, uh, and uh, before I say hello to everyone who's uh, in the in the live, I'll just really quickly post um, link to this live stream to our discord server and um, anyone uh, who is not yet a member of our discord server i really uh, recommend that you consider joining uh, basically there's again a link in the description box below and the the idea of the server is to build a community of people interested in uh, working and studying in finland and uh, in the server i post updates about videos and upcoming live streams and we have a bit more personal dialogue and for example I answer your most burning questions there as well great um let's say we have uh yes what's up welcome back to the stream uh Johan, what is up welcome to the stream Usma awesome to have you here as well we got uh, JD uh, VM086 what's up Lisanna what is up M Medhat what's up welcome to the stream um hope you have have had an awesome start to this February. Um, uh, ES asking how was my how is my thesis going? It's 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 still a working progress. Thank you for asking. So anyone listening, uh, if you don't know, I, I'm basically uh, I'm basically trying to finish my master studies. I, I just have to finish up my thesis, uh, which I should have ready within the next couple of weeks. So hopefully that is going to be over. It's a it's been a rough rough uh road so far but and and one of the reasons why i have i haven't posted any videos in a while uh roy what is up welcome to the stream uh awesome to have you here as well uh abhishek what's up andrea what's up welcome everyone welcome to the stream uh guys again once again if you have any questions about working living or studying in finland do post your questions into the google form in the description box below and i will actually jump right in to the questions. I have a couple of questions that I had did not have time to answer the last time. So I will start with those and then I will slowly get to the questions that you have posted this week. Sh Shahid, what's up? Uh, dummy uh, Demum. Um, I will answer your question, but if you could please uh, post your question into a the Google form that I have linked in the description box below, because then I ha then I will have all the questions here in front of me on my computer, and I will be able to go through them one by one. Anyhow, welcome everyone. Uh, once again, join the Discord server, and I will jump straight into the questions. So the first one comes from Sakura. Again, this is from a couple of weeks ago. And uh, Sakura is from Sri Lanka and uh, has not yet decided whether or not she wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing a master's at the University in, uh, of Helsinki, specifically in entrepreneurship um, or environmental sustainability slash environmental law. And uh, the question is, according to, current, according to the current pandemic situation, talking about COVID, how is the job market and job availability in Finland? 
Uh, now um, we are a bit nervous to migrate uh, to Finland with this unpredictable environment because I'm planning to apply for my master's in 2022 and my son and husband also are planning to come with me. Uh, basically my question is, do you think uh, that in this current situation as foreigners, can we find any part-time jobs to manage our day-to-day -day expenses? That's a great question. And uh, of course, since uh, Sakura, you and, uh, and your family, you're planning on moving to Finland in 2022. So that's next year. Uh, I hope, I, I, I'm sure that everyone hopes that we are going to have, uh, we are already rid of this current COVID situation. Uh, the current um, uh, vaccination plan for Finland is that we should have most adults vaccinated by the end of summer, if I rem remember correctly. And, and again, don't quote me on this. This is how, how the um, Finnish uh, health uh, services have, uh, uh, you know, told about this to the news, uh, uh, to the news, the, I, I think yesterday. So this is the current plan. Of course, if you're watching this in, in replay, the plans have most likely already shifted somewhat. Uh, anyway, back to your question. So if you're moving here in 2022, I'm, I'm sure that the situation is, if not all completely over, then at least quite far in, you know, uh, quite close to being over. So uh, I, sh I'm, I hope that the job market situation is much, much better already at, at that time. Um, to your question about, in general, about uh, finding part-time jobs as internationals um, to pay for your day-to-day -day expenses, uh, again, this is very a very personal question because it depends on the uh, the person who is asking. Uh, for example, in your case, you will be doing a master's in environmental law, for example. That is a, a very interesting field, and uh, I think that it might be possible for you to find part-time job uh, a part-time job while you're studying of course the the questions are if you are practicing law are you actually allowed to practice law in finland while you're studying or are you actually able to work as an associate for example for a company with your bachelor's degree i have no idea whether or not that's possible but i, that, I think that's something that you need to figure out uh, on the other hand if you are you know studying environmental uh, sustainability that's a massively broad field you could do that in terms of technology or business uh, law etc and um, i'm sure that there's jobs part-time jobs there even if it, you know even for international students and i'm saying i'm saying even to international students, in reality, it doesn't matter whether whether you are uh, a Finnish person or not. Uh, however, finding a part-time job that is going to pay for your day-to-day, -day, you know, expenses is going to be difficult because of the um, uh, level of salary versus the, uh, you know, level of expenses that you are going to accrue. So depends on, on, on what kind of living cost you have, what are your living habits, what kind of a job you're able to, to get and at what point. Uh, so I have to, uh, there's no direct answer here. Um, it's going to be difficult, but it's, it's definitely not impossible, especially if your husband already has a degree. That is going to help. Um, Anyways, uh, let's see who we have. Homicidal Chimpanzee, what's up? Awesome to have you here as well. Saying, digging the new channel name. Yeah, by the way, thanks actually for acknowledging it. Um, if if you haven't noticed, I actually changed the channel name to Road to Finish. Uh, the idea was that I've been getting a lot of feedback uh, from people saying that they cannot find my channel uh, with just you know the previous name, which was Oliver R. And that's true because if you search for that name in, in YouTube search, basically you would you, you see videos from last week tonight with John Oliver. So, well, that's, that's funny. Um, but yeah, uh, Dummy Demon, uh, I will get to your question. Please post your question into the Google form, which is down below. Uh, that is how these live streams work. Uh, if you post your question into the into the live chat, I will not be able to get there uh, because I have already a bunch of questions in the live uh, in the Google form. So if you want your uh, uh, question answered live, please post your question in, into the Google form, and I will be going through the questions one by one in a first come first serve basis. So it w might take a while, but I will get there. Um, the next question comes from Paras, uh, who is from India and uh, 
has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing a master's in computer sciences at Aalto University. And uh, the question is, I really want to migrate to Finland. I'm a web backend developer working mainly on PHP, having two years of experience. I want to study master's of computer sciences. And uh, is it realistic for me to think that by coming to Finland, I will get a job as a developer uh, before my um, job seeker visa expires? Uh, the one we get after graduation to look for a job. All right, so there's a, there's a question here, but be, uh, before I need to actually explain what he's talking about. So what um, Paras is po talking about is that when you come to Finland to study uh, a degree, basically, you will uh, have to apply for a residence permit if you are from outside the European Union. And when you apply for this resident permit, uh, I'm sorry, with this resident permit to study, you can actually work for 25 hours per week uh, on average, per semester, basically. And uh, this means that you're not allowed to work full-time while you're studying in Finland. However, when you graduate uh, from a Finnish university or University of Applied Sciences, you will be uh, you will be able to apply for a residence permit to find a job. So basically, if you have not already found a job before your, your graduation, you will get be able to apply for a one-year-long uh, uh, residence permit during which you can then look for jobs and if you're able to find a good job or a job uh, uh, within that year uh, you should be able to get a uh, uh, how do you say you, you you will be able to get an extended residence permit for working in Finland and um, so Paras's question was basically based on his uh, exp uh, background as a PHP developer, basically web backend developer uh, with a couple of years ex w years of experience and, you know, with an idea of doing a master's in Finland, would he be able to find a job in Finland before that one year mark expires? Again, this depends on you. Uh, this always depends on you and your ability to find a job, uh, be able to understand the job market in Finland uh, in order to, you know, get through the process, as well as, of course, your skills. So nothing is ever guaranteed. You can have two master's degrees and a, and a um, doctorate from Harvard, but that does not gu guarantee your you a job anywhere. So it's always up to you. However, based on the current job market and, for example, the background that Paras told me, I, I, I'm absolutely certain that he is able to find a job um, you know, within that year after graduation. Absolutely. Excuse me. The next question comes from uh, Roy, who actually just left the, the stream. Uh, but Roy, if you're watching this in replay, um, I think this is a question from last week, the, the, the last stream. And uh, Roy is from Canada. And um, the question is, my son is coming here to Finland uh, in the summer to join the military and then the university. Should he apply to the university right away and work on some of the Finnish courses before the military? Uh, that's a really, really good question. So uh, for anyone who doesn't know what Roy is talking about, he's talking about the army or military service. So basically um, Roy's son has a dual citizenship. He is both the citizen of, of Canada as well as uh, Finland. Uh, and uh, if you are a citizen in Finland and, and you're a male, you need to take a you need to do a mandatory military service when you you turn 18. Um, or after you turn 18. Uh, the military service is from 6 to 12 months nowadays. And um, uh, this also applies if you get a citizen, uh, Finnish citizenship, uh, you before you turn uh, 30, you also have to take this uh, mandatory military service. Uh, anyway, basically, so Roy's question is, should his son uh, take some university courses and, and learn some Finnish before the military? I actually would not recommend it necessarily. I would recommend that he definitely should take some Finnish courses, but you can do that in the open university, Avoin Yliopisto, uh, which is basically a, a system where anyone can take university courses in, in Finland. Uh, they cost something, but not, not that much. But you can take, for example, uh, Finnish language as a second language uh, courses. Uh, so that you can brush up your Finnish a bit before he goes to the military, and uh, that that's completely fine. Uh, I would not necessarily recommend starting the university before the military because he is not able to do that many courses, um, and 
basically, especially if if and when we get the, rid of the COVID situation, um, the university in Finland is very social. So your the first weeks at the uni are going to be a lot of socializing and, and you know parties etc. And it, it, it's going to suck a lot if he comes to Finland, starts his studies with a specific group of people, and then he goes to the military right afterwards, comes back after a year, and then he's he has to continue his studies with a new new group of people. So I would rather start, you know, when he's out, and then go, you know plow straight through the the studies with the same uh, classmates, basically. So this is what I'm I'm saying. Cool. Uh, yes, Ilyas saying uh, that PHP is a very disrespected language among programmers. Uh, yeah, that might be might be true, but uh, of course, in, in you have to uh, consider. Uh, well, yes, commenting to the to what I said about Paras and and his question about computer sciences and the ability to find a job. Of course, uh, some languages, for example, Java, isn't necessarily that popular. It's it's uh, very common, but it's not popular among um, among many. Uh, developers however it does, doesn't really matter because at, you know during his master's um, studies Paras is going to learn a bunch of different languages and he's going to specialize in other stuff as well uh, on top of just web development uh, if you if you do a master's in, in computer sciences you will not most likely do something something else than just web development so um, I, I would dis disregard the PHP completely it doesn't really matter uh, because you can always learn different languages as long as you have the specific frameworks that you can work with. Um, cool. The next question comes from Ahamud uh, Munin, who comes from Bangladesh. And um, he is applying to Aalto University to do a bachelor's in science and technology. And uh, the question is, uh, sir... Oh, by the way, one, one more thing here. Uh, for everyone listening live and uh, in the replay... Uh, please, you do not have to call me sir or, or mister, uh, just call me Oliver. Uh, in Finland, we like to keep things really informal, meaning that there is no need for call uh, to call anyone sir or ma'am or mister or missus. Uh, in, actually, funny, funny enough, in the Finnish language, we don't even have these terms you know, that we would use in Finnish. We just call each other by our first names. So just call me Oliver. There's no need to, to be too formal here. Um, yeah, just to let everyone know. Um, anyway, the question is, please help me as soon as possible. I have applied for a university uh, through the joint application system, but I haven't submitted my educational degree that uh, at the same time. Uh, from the 21st of uh, 5th of January, I'm uplo uh, uploading it, the educational degree certificate, and trying to send my send modifications, but a message saying internal server error pops up every time every time I want to submit it. I have tried it plenty of times and now I can't even sleep because the deadline is near and although I have all my documents I cannot submit. Now I'm completely helpless. I don't know how to approach from here. Um, Alright, so um, Ahamod, I'm, I'm really sorry this was a question from two weeks ago. Unfortunately the deadlines have already passed so this question is not relevant anymore. However, uh, for anyone watching this in replay, just please note uh, that even though I'm, I'm speaking about education and, and, for example, you know, the university applications on this channel, I'm not an expert in the application system. Uh, I, do, I have no prior experience in actually going through the applications myself because Finnish nationals have a separate application system uh, to uh, compare to international students. And I, I am not... I do not have any experience in processing university applications in Finland. So uh, just please take that into account. For example, this kind of a que uh, question about an internal server error at the joint application website. No way, no, I have no answer to that. My only uh, guidance here would be to contact the university directly by phone and tell them about, about the situation and ask them if they are able to help. So that's it. Unfortunately, I cannot help with these kind of things. Uh, Param, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Uh, Nguyen, uh, what's up? Also, also. Uh, Harshal, welcome to the stream as well. Uh, Mudasar, awesome. Awesome to have you here as well. Welcome to the stream. Um, uh, Kashis, um, 
what's up also awesome to have you here in the stream as well uh just to let everyone know who has not yet uh who just joined the stream or if you're first time here in the live stream uh how these live streams work is in that in the description box below below the video i have a link to a google form and uh, if you want me to answer your questions live uh, please uh, could you please post your question into the google form again that you can find below um, because if you post your question into the live chat uh, i'm most likely going to miss your question because the live chat gets pretty busy uh, at times um, the link to the google form also can be found uh, at the um, uh, at the start of the live uh, live chat if, if you cannot find the link in the description box cool the next question comes from Dami, Dami Lola who comes from Nigeria and uh, she is starting school this semester at the, doing a bachelor's in nursing that's cool uh, and the question is hello is it possible to change the course once you're in Finland or the degree or is it possible to apply to another school for a different study I applied for nursing through the joint appli uh, joint application process but it was deleted because I had two applications can I change my school and study when I get to Finland uh, no, no no you cannot once you once you uh, have been admitted to a certain degree uh, you have to separately apply to another program if you want to change your your degree afterwards you are not able to change schools or degrees degree programs uh, after you have arrived to finland that's how it works for finnish students as well so no if uh if you are admitted uh, uh to another program and then you want to to another um if you are admitted to one and then you want to change it later you need to apply to that um, additional pro uh, that to that other program uh, in the next application period cool the next question comes from Uzma from India and uh, Uzma is uh, about to do a PhD or applying for a PhD in psychology uh, in uh, one of the Finnish universities and the question is is language learning necessary for a doctorate student um, that's a really good question. I do not know. I have not looked through any of the doctoral do doctoral program curriculum. Um, so yeah, I, I do not know. Uh, however, you, to expand on this a bit, uh, learning Finnish in order to do well in Finland, Finland is not necessary. So basically every Finnish person speaks good enough English and especially in, you know, the professional word, world, uh, fin Finns speak good English and you do not necessarily have to learn to speak Finnish, at least not, you know, at, at, at a native level. However, learning Finnish, of course, is going to help you with your life in Finland. It's going to make things easier. Uh, you know, you're going to be, uh, it's easier to integrate into the society and, you know, you're going to get more out of the Finnish experience. So I, I highly recommend to everyone watching that you should definitely learn at least some Finnish uh, if and when you actually move here. The next question comes from Medhat and I think uh, Medhat and I think actually we're in the questions from this week uh, and uh, Medhat is from Egypt and uh, is ap applying to Aalto University and, and the University of Tampere to do a master's in artificial in intelligence. Nice. And uh, the question is, does Alto and Tampere have an interview phase after being accepted in the master's program? Or am I automatically admitted into the university after being accepted? So uh, th this is an interesting question. I'm not completely sure wh where, this com where this comes from. So after you have been admitted to study in a university in Finland, that means that you're admitted to study there. Uh, so there's nothing extra after... Uh, that you know you would need to do afterwards so once you get your admission letter or accept letter of letter of acceptance that means that you are being accepted into the program so there's nothing afterwards however uh, many master's program programs do have an interview in the application process but that comes before you are accepted so some uh, master's program applications might have multiple different uh, phases so you, you need to send your, send your application, then you might have an entrance exam or, you know, SATs or something. You might need to ha need to do an interview, etc. And uh, um, 
however, all of this is contained within the application process itself. After you're being, after you have been admitted, you will be admitted, and there's nothing, you know, afterwards. So I hope that that answered your question. I'm not completely sure, but uh, at least I, I think it. Uh, I'm unless I, I misunderstood the question. Um, the next question comes from Jay from India, and uh, Jay is still in high school, but is interested in doing interested in doing a bachelor's in computer sciences. And uh, the question is, uh, hello, sir. Again, no need to call me sir. Please just call me Oliver. Uh, current, I'm currently stu studying in the 12th grade uh, in high school and want to know about universities in Finland for bachelors in computer sciences um, slash computer uh, science, uh, computer engineering and their uh, rough fees uh, or estimates of their tuition fees. So that's a good question. Um, uh, it's a difficult question for me to answer because there's so many different programs in computer sciences on the bachelor's level in Finland. However, what I can say is that, for example, Aalto University has a computer science uh, degree in the bachelor's level, which is 12,000 euros per year. Uh, that is one of the more expensive bachelor's programs. Uh, but the tuition fees range from around 8,000 to around 16,000. Uh, however, the more expensive ones are usually for the master's programs and, and you know, bachelor's programs are from somewhere around, I'm sorry, actually 6,500-ish 6, 6, to the uh, 16,000. So that's the range. So it's a l big, big range. However, bachelor's programs are usually in the lower end. So up to an, a bit over 10,000 euros per, per year. Um, uh, Bargov, what's up? Welcome, welcome to the stream. Uh, if you have any questions, just post them in the in the Google form as usual, and uh, I will get to your question uh, uh, when I will get there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so for example, Alt University has a bachelor's in in computer sciences. Uh, Metropolia University of Applied Sciences has a has bachelor's in computer sciences. Uh, some University of Applied Sciences has a program in computer sciences. There's a bunch of different universities. What I would do is basically I would just Google uh, bachelors in computer science in Finland and you will get a bunch of different uh, results on uh, in Google. And uh, again, remember that the, the tuition fees are different, but they range from somewhere around 6,500 uh, 6 to 12,000 euros per year. Uh, do also remember that Finnish universities have good scholarship programs. So uh, if you need to pay tuition, you can also apply for scholarships. So uh, uh, take that into account. All right, the next, qu next question comes from ES. And uh, once again, ES is from Hungary uh, and uh, interested in doing a bachelor's in computer sciences. And there's a couple of questions here. And uh, the first of them is, what do you think is the best forest in Finland? <laughs> that's that's an interesting question. Um, what is the best forest in Finland? Um, just let me check one, one thing from... Um, from... Uh, uh, um, one fact really quickly. So yeah, the question, what is th what is my favorite forest in Finland? Well, Finland is the size of Germany, uh, if you think about it geographically, and 75% uh, of the entire country of Finland is covered in forests. So there's quite a quite a bit of forests that, that we have in Finland. But if, you, if, you've, uh, if your question is, what are my, you know, favorite places to go, for example, hiking, uh, there's multiple. Uh, one, one of one awesome place is actually Nuuksio National Park, which is actually in the next to the capital region. So it's just half an hour away from the center of Helsinki. Uh, Nuuksio is a, is a massive, massive national park, uh, mostly forests and lakes, and it's it's lovely. There's a lot of really really good paths that have been marked, but then there's a, a lot of places that you can go if you can read a map. Uh, then if you if, if I look at my, you know, other favorite places to go for hiking or for if I, for example, want to go to the na into the nature for a week, um, there's multiple different uh, national forests uh, and national parks in Lapland that I really like. 
Uh, there is one in um, uh, northwest Finland, which is all the way at the northwest top of Finland. And then there is one in the um, uh, kind of north uh, east part of Finland as well. There is basically Finland. If you sp- fin- if you split Finland in half, there's two two parks that I, I, I really like. And now that I mentioned it, I actually think that I, I could just show it to you. Mm. Let's see. All right, so if, if we're in Google Maps and we look at Finland, so, you know, this is Finland uh, in full and we are here, we are here in Helsinki. And uh, Nuuksio National Park that I spoke about is right here. So Nuuksio is really, really close to um, to Helsinki. You can you can drive there in half an hour with a car. However, if if you you know really like to hike and and want to go for a week long trip uh, hiking, I recommend coming to Lapland, which is this entire area is called Lapland. So it's a it's a geographical area, and you you need to drive for depending on where you go like. 12, 18 hours, depending on the, on the place. Um, basically, the two different uh, national parks that I really love are uh, the Kevon Luonnonpuisto, Kevon Kevo National Park. I was there uh, last year. And then Urho Kekkosen Kansallispuisto right here, which is another uh, really awesome national park. They have awesome hikes there, and uh, I, I really love it. It's mostly uh, hill country or fjell country. So because we don't in Finland, we don't have, uh, you know, mountains per se, like what do you have in the Alps? Uh, our hill, uh, fjells are actually more flat uh, because Finland uh, used to be under ice uh, during the la- latest ice age. And that actually crushed all of the uh, high mi- mountains that we had. So we, we have more of these like hill type of uh uh, fjells that we call them. They're still big, and uh, it takes a uh, it's it's a lot of work to actually hike in Lapland, but I uh, but I love it. Uh, you can basically be there, and there's no one there within a hundred kilometers of you. So I, I just love the peace and quiet that you can actually get there. Anyways, the second question was, how much do you think is the minimum amount of money I need to go to Finland as a as a European Union citizen, uh, meaning that I meaning that I do not do not have to worry about tuition fees? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, depends on the city and depends, of course, on your personal living habits and, and how much money you usually spend. Depends on whether you like to party, whether you go to clubs, uh, how much you spend on alcohol. Um, for example, if you smoke, that is going to be quite expensive because f- smoking or cigarettes are taxed in Finland quite heavily. Um, depends on, on what kind of sports you want to do. But my recommendation for a benchmark, if you if you want to save enough money to, you know, live comfortably in Helsinki as a student without having to worry about money um, and being able to, you know, pay for every all the day to day living costs and have some extra money over for traveling, for partying, I would say that you should aim to somewhere around 800 euros per per month um, because that's quite enough for living, you know, comfortably without having to stress about money uh, all the time. And uh, that that will not force you to tell your friends no every single time they ask you to go out. So I, I would say that 800 euros is a good benchmark. All right. Mm, there, the next question comes from... Uh, Naina from India, and uh, Naina is also is still in high school, but is interested in doing a bachelor's at Aalto University in international business. And uh, the question is, does Finland have any requirements like IELTS, SAT, um, ACT, or AP? And if they do have, uh, if they do have one, then which subjects to take for the SAT or AP for international business? Uh, that's a really good question. Uh, this comes up uh, almost every single week. Uh, so Naina, if you're still live. Uh, Every single university in Finland uh, has their own requirements, own specific requirements for each of their programs. So, for example, just within Aalto University, there's, you know, dozens and dozens of different programs that you can apply for. 
you know, just within the business school, there is a huge amount of different degrees that you can apply for. And each of them is going to have their own separate requirements. Uh, for example, uh, master's degree programs at Aalto Univer University School of Business do not require the SATs. However, I do know that the, uh, I think that the international business um, program at Aalto University does require the SATs. However, if you look at another school, they might not actually require the SATs or the IELTS. So you always have to check the specific um, uh, programs that you are looking for. Uh, that you want to apply to and then the uh, specific requirements for them. So, for example, in your case, <laughs> you are interested in the... Um, you are uh, interested in the bachelor's program in international business at Aalto University. So I would just Google Aalto bachelor's in English, look up the bachelor's programs in English at Aalto, then come to the international business, which is here, um, right here, open that up, go to um, how to apply and from here let's see you are in the admission group 2 whoops no let's see <laughs> no there you go The admission is based on the SAT results. So, for example, in this program, you would need to do the SA SAT specifically. So, you, again, you need to check out the specific requirements for each of the programs that you're applying for. So, for example, at Alta University, you need to do, do the SATs, evidence-based reading and writing, and the mathematics sections. However, this is for the international business program. If you want to apply for another program, bachelor's program at Aalto, for example, computer sciences, the requirements are going to be different. So again, check out the specific requirements for the program and the university that you're actually looking for. Uh, that's, the, that's the only way to know for sure. All right, the next question comes from Abhi Shah, uh, who comes from India and uh, is, uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing a master's in computer sciences. And uh, the question is, why should Finland be an ideal choice to settle in? I, need, I mean, the weather is extreme, five months cold out of 12 months. Cost of living is expensive, permanent residency takes six years. So wouldn't, uh, wouldn't countries like New Zealand be ideal for an individual to do a master's and settle in? No offense meant, no offense taken. Um, first of all, New Zealand is, is also extremely expensive. So um, Finland is, is actually... In, in some regards, Finland is cheaper than New Zealand or Australia or, or the US. Um, this all, always depends on the perspective. So, for example, if you think about uh, New Zealand, uh, the cost structure there is relatively high anyways in, any, uh, in everything. Uh, just because it's an island, everything, a lot of things are imported and costs money. So, the, the many, many of the consumer prices are higher. Uh, then on the other hand, in, for example, the U.S., the taxes are much lower. However, they do not have a universal uh, healthcare system as, as we do have. Um, they do not have free education. So, for example, uh, what I'm meaning here is that if you settle here and get kids and, and they have a Finnish uh, citizenship and residency, they can go to, to school for free or, or it's pay, paid by taxes, but basically. Um, however, what I would say that... Uh, First of all, Finland is uh, the safest country in the world. This has actually been researched. So multiple years in a row, uh, Finland has been uh, uh, on top of the charts. Uh, Finland has the cleanest air, cleanest water in the world. Finland is the safest safest country in the world. Oh, that I said already. Um, Finland has the best education system in the world, again, consistently for years uh, by research. Um the, even though we don't have the grand landscapes of New Zealand, and by the way, not, no offense to New Zealand, I would love to go there. I would actually love to, to live in New Zealand at some point. Um, Finland just works. Everything works here. We have a very well uh, maintained and uh, functioning um, 
you know, system, uh, a government as well. And one of the, the ways that we have shown it is, is again, the COVID crisis. Uh, New Zealand is doing extremely well the, with the COVID, but one of the, the pros that they have is that it's an island. They can close close up the country and no one can actually come in. However, I'm not taking anything from their government. They have done an excellent job. However, uh, Finland is on, on the top of the charts in this case as well, because we have a very well-functioning um, society and a governmental system. So we are actually doing really well in terms of the, you know, comparing to, to, to the rest of the world in terms of COVID. Uh, of course, the numbers are going up, uh, up and down all the time, like in the rest of the world. But again, things just, just work here. In addition, I have multiple uh, videos on my channel already where I talk more in detail about different reasons why you should move to Finland. But um, for example, in your, your case, you said that the weather is extreme. It's not. It's actually not extreme. Uh, if you come from India, it's different, of course. Um, five months is it's cold. Uh, you're saying that during the um, out of twelve months of the year, five months is cold. Depends on what you're mani meaning. If you're used to having twenty, uh, if you are used to having the entire entire year, uh, you know, plus twenty, plus thirty, plus thirty five degrees Celsius. Yes, then Finland is cold. However. Uh, actually, a funny thing is that uh, in the recent years, uh, a specific type of tourism has increased in Finland. And this, this tourism is kind of climate tourism. So, for example, there's been a lot of tourists come to Finland from China uh, because uh, simply because the air quality and the um, climate here is mild. It's mild. It's not too cold. It's not too warm. So because the air quality here is the best in the world, a lot of people who come from uh, cities where that have polluted air, they enjoy it here so much because it's so beautifully, you know, <laughs> clean, uh, the air. Uh, on the other hand, actually, there, the tourism industry or tourist, tourism before COVID, of course, had increased from Central Europe to Finland, especially during summer, because the summers in Central Europe have become so hot that people can't stand it, for example, in Italy or, or uh, Paris or, or um, Berlin. There are people actually coming to Finland because it's milder here. It's not cold, it's mild. So again, this depends on your, pers your, your perspective. Um, but yeah, definitely we have seasons. We have winter, spring, uh, summer, and then autumn. I love the seasons. I think the change between the seasons is awesome. I think I love all of them. Um, yeah, again, depends on your uh, perspective. About the permanent residency, for example, you said that it takes six years. That is uh, true. It takes uh, quite a long time. Uh, it doesn't necessarily take you six years to actually get permanent residency, because if you study here, it takes a, a shorter time. Um, but of course, if, if you're looking for a permanent residence, residency and you want it as fast as possible, sure, then Finland might not be the first place to come. However, you can, if, if, if and when you graduate, and you get a job, you will be able to stay here to work, you know, with that job. And then after you have worked here for X amount of years, you can then get a permanent residence residency. And then that's the road for actual citizenship if you wanted that at some point. So, yeah, depends on the perspective again. However, what I would say to anyone, for example, who comes from India especially, is that the return on investment... Um, uh, in terms of the education in Finland, it's really, really good. Uh, this is because the so return on in investment, meaning that how uh, how good of a value you are getting for what you're paying for. And then uh, one more thing is is the payback period. So how qu quickly you can actually pay back your pay uh, tuition. This is because in Finland, the tuition fees are actually quite mild. They're actually quite moderate compared to many other Western countries like the US, Germany, uh, the UK, New Zealand even. Uh, and the salaries here are actually quite good. So meaning because the tuitions are moderate and the salaries are good, you can actually pay the tuition fee back really quickly compared to many, many other countries. Cool. I, there's a couple of reasons here. Again, I have more videos on the channel talking about why Finland is a good option. Um, I want to leave it, leave it here so that I can uh, move on to the next questions. But um, I think here's a couple of things to keep in mind. All right. The next question comes from John. John. Uh, uh, John from Portugal. 
And um, is it John, John or John or John? Um, just let me know in the in the chat, for example. Anyway, John is 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 still in high school, but is interested in doing a degree in medicine. And um, the question is: In the Portuguese system, we apply to school based on our school's internal grade and exam grade. However, I did some research, and it appears it's not compatible with the Finnish system. So, to be admitted in college for the first, uh, to be um, it's not compatible with the Finnish system to be admitted in college for the first year. Do you know if you have uh, to do some kind of a test or exam to be admitted, and if so, which? Mm, this is a very in interesting question. I have actually have not heard of this kind of a system that exists in Portugal. Um, I I cannot comment on on the on this because I have no prior knowledge of this. Um, however, I would I'm pretty skeptical about the Portuguese high school system not being compatible with the Finnish university applications. Um, and uh, however, what you do need to take into account that if you want to uh, study medicine in Finland, um, I think every single bachelor's program in medicine, uh, I'm actually talking about like medical medicine, not like not um, not not like a, a degree in nursing. So if you want to study medicine medicine, like medical doctor medicine, uh, I think you need to speak f you need to be fluent enough in Finnish to apply. Uh, don't quote me on this. You need to check this uh, before you apply uh, or when you're doing your research. But uh, I have to say that I do not have any experience or knowledge about the Portuguese system, so I really cannot say anything anything more on this. Hey, Evgenia, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here as well. Um, I'm not done with my thesis. If, if you're about going to ask about it, I'm almost done. But I, I thought that this is good change to have this live stream this week, so... As answering some questions. Um, the next question comes from Punit uh, from India, and uh, Punit has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in in the software industry. And uh, the question is: I was exploring some job opportunities in Finland, and I get to know, uh, I, I got to know that there are some career fairs at different university in, universities in Finland. So can you tell me how this works and can a student who is currently not studying in Finland get a job through those career fairs? Uh, no. It, technically, yeah. Uh, okay, uh, let's go back. So the university career fairs that we have in Finland are, of course, during the COVID year or COVID situation, they're done uh, remotely online. Um, however, they're just normal career fairs. So you have a lot of companies physically present at the university they have company representatives uh, they have tables they have they sh you know give out pens uh, they have recruiters there they have banners you know from their company and then they just talk about you know try to meet as many people as possible talk about their uh, career opportunities and they are trying to find potential ap applicants for their jobs um, these are not you know exclusively only to university students the reason being uh, that universities in Finland are public and they're actually open. So the campuses are open for um, basically anyone. Uh, not all pl spaces, but most of them. And uh, this means that you could, in, a th in, in theory, you know, get yourself into the university campus to talk to the company representatives. <laughs> um, however, the problems are, uh, there's a couple of problems here. First of all, the uh, university career fairs are only communicated to university students so they're not publicly advertised they're only you know advertised to university students so you would never you you have to work hard to actually even figure out when the university career fairs happened um, however the the biggest thing here is that you are not going to be employed as a in a Finnish company as a student who is not studying in Finland J it just doesn't happen it's there's no way. Uh, of course, if you are, you know, the most brilliant person in the world in a specific field, but if you live in Finland and you're studying Finland, you will not be able to get a job in a Finnish company in Finland uh, because they want to get you into Finland. So we don't do really these kind of remote uh, hirings where the person is uh, studying in an another country but working in Finland. Some companies might, the majority doesn't. So I would say that there's... Um, if you want to come to f uh, work in Finland, you will need to be um, able to move here uh, when when your job start job starts. So, yeah. 
Cool. Uh, Yevgenia saying that we are having a member stream next week, by the way. Yes, we are. Uh, if you have any questions that you would like me to answer uh, next in the next week's members only channel members only live stream again uh, as you know just post me the questions in discord and I will I will get back to you um, next uh, Tuesday I think yeah um, what I'm talking about and what Yevgenia Yev is talking about uh, for um, anyone who is a channel member of a, at least a second level actually gets access to our monthly members only uh, YouTube channel members only live streams uh, during which I answer you know all of your questions however we have less people um, in the stream so I, I can actually spend more time answering individual people's questions so if you're interested in, in you know Becoming a channel member, you can actually click the join button here below the video and uh, you can actually see all of the different perks of becoming a member. For example, access to behind the scenes videos and access to getting access to these members only live streams. Um, but yeah, the next question comes from uh, Kuldip. Kuldip is from Bangladesh and uh, has not yet decided what, uh, whether or not he wants to study in Finland. However, is interested in doing a master's in sciences. The question is: Is it the question is is it true that Finland wants international students for their money? Do they admit to welcoming foreigners in in order to boost the economy? Please be honest. Um, I'm not completely sure where where this comes from. Um, of course, we want to have get international students into the country because then you would come here to do a degree and then after you have done a degree we want you to stay here to work uh, and contribute into the society and, and live here and build a career here of course you would also be ta paying taxes so that's always good a good thing but we also need a lot of international talent coming to Finland because we have a huge deficit in for example in the IT sector and in many hard science sectors so we need the talent so that's one of the reasons why we need people here uh, also it's good to have international people working in Finland or as uh, um, it's it's good to have a more diverse workforce in Finland because we are an international country we have companies that are doing international business uh, most of our you know business in Finland comes from exports anyway so of course we need international talent and, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this YouTube, YouTube channel is actually getting um, uh, getting uh, uh, international people into Finland because I, we need you guys. So, but yeah, of course we also like to collect taxes, uh, but that we need the taxes to run the society. And, and if you want to live in Finland, you need to pay taxes as do the Finnish people. However, if, if your question is, do we, do we try to get international people to Finland just for your money? Uh, no, that the answer there is absolutely not. We need, we want you guys to come to Finland because we want to build a an international society, and we need more international people into Finland, so that Finland can succeed as a country in the long term. Mm. Uh, Homisadal chimpanzee saying that I think he's talking about money brought from their homeland. No, it still doesn't matter. Uh, the tuition fees are not a reason for you for for universities to bring you into Finland because the universities would be financed by the government, anyways. If you know, or by the government, if they only accepted Finnish people, so it doesn't change their situation at all. Um, <laughs> he is also saying that again, this live stream is sponsored by Finland. In a sense, yes. The the. Uh, this is at least done in collaboration with Finland. Um, but yeah, I, I want you guys to come here because I, for example, I have a startup. I, I have a technology startup that I'm working on and I need international talented people in from, you know, IT and technology and the science sciences. Uh, but if, if we at some point also want to go abroad somewhere, you know, for example, to India, we also need some local talent to bring us to the Indian market or the, you know, Chinese market or some, you know, things like that. That's so, you know, we need you guys. Please come here. It's, it's, living here is awesome. It's just absolutely awesome. Um, not sure if that answered your question at all, but uh, 
you know, gave it a shot. <laughs> anyway, um, the next question comes from Malavika, uh, who is also from India and uh, uh, is still in high school, uh, but is interested in doing a bachelor bachelor's in Aalto University uh, in the International Business Degree Program. And uh, the question is, what's the acceptance rate or admission rate at uh, at Aalto University? That's a good question. I actually don't have the numbers. Um, the last time I checked, I think it was somewhere around 10%, 10, 11, 12% or so, depending on the program. So it, uh, again, this depends on the uh, specific program that you're applying to. So uh, there's... Because in Finland, you just don't, you don't just apply to a university. Like, okay, I'm applying to Aalto University. Uh, rather, you apply to a specific degree program at a specific university. So I'm applying to Aalto University to the program of international business, which means that there's a, uh, there's a specific number of people applying to each of these programs. And the admission rates change every single year, depending on how many people are applying the admission numbers, how many people are admitted, they do not change. Uh, it's the, the rate that changes depending on how many people are applying. But I think that the uh, admission rates have been historically somewhere around 10% or so, um, at least in the, in the Finnish programs. I'm not sure about the international programs. Um, I'm pretty sure that if you just Google this, uh, you can find some kind of an answer or statistics from all the university website. Um, but but yeah, do take into account that all the universities is uh, one of the two top universities in, or depending on the field that you're looking at, it's it's the number one ranked university in Finland, along along with the University of Helsinki. Um, the next question comes from. Uh, Actually, uh, Yevgenia has a couple of funny comments here. Uh, first of all, Oliver, all Finnish people are sponsored by Finland. And Finland is sponsored by Finnish people. It's a win-win. That's pretty much accurate. So <laughs> we pay taxes and the, the taxes take care of us at least to some, some you know, level, yeah, of course. Um, and Yevgenia also saying that, Oliver, last time you answered 12 questions of mine, I'll have to think intensively to decide upon the new ones. Uh, but of course, I'll think of them. Oh, Yevgeny again talking about the members-only live streams, uh, where you uh, you guys are actually able to send me questions beforehand. Again, if you're interested in joining these members-only live streams, uh, click uh, I'm sorry, right here, the join button below the video to check out all the membership levels and the perks. Anyways, the next question comes from Harshal, and uh, Harshal is uh, again from India and is starting school this semester at uh, LUT, or La Peranda University of Applied Sciences. Is it? Or, or La per uh, University of La Peranda? Univer Let's see, LUT? That's the, the LUT University, I'm sorry, LUT University. Uh, to do a master's in data science and software engineering. Nice, awesome, that's cool. Um, the question is, how are the job opportunities in the IT sector in Finland for international students? Funny that you asked, I actually just interviewed a, a very interesting person uh, for the channel, that I, and I'm going to publish the interview in a couple of weeks. And uh, we spoke specifically about the IT sector in Finland, and uh, the... Uh, I asked this this exact question from him. I, I do have my opinion, but he basically said that we have a deficit of over 10, even up to 20,000 people in the IT sector. And, uh, you know, 20, 20 or 10,000 people could get a job right now. Uh, you know, of course, if, they, if they're proficient enough. But in the, the IT sector, in, in terms of job opportunities, is one of the best fields in Finland right now because there's so much need for um, highly talented and, and, you know, highly educated software developers, uh, you know, AI uh, specialists, cloud computing specialists, etc. So the only... only uh, one more thing. Uh, actually, universities in Finland are actu are having a bit of a problem with this topic because they actually many universities in Finland are struggling in getting their students to, to graduate in time. Uh, graduate in time because companies are basically ripping them out of, out of out from school already, uh, what, even while they're studying. So the job opportunities in in, in IT and and technology are huge. 
the one thing that I would note, because this has come up recently quite a lot of times, um, even though I'm saying that the job opportunities in IT are good, that does not mean that it guarantees you a job. For example, uh, if you are a basic web developer and you have a couple of years of experience in, in you know, basic web development or basic languages being, for example, Java or PHP, that is not enough. So you need to either be very proficient in one language or, you know, something that is pretty common. You need to be really good at that or you should then specialize in something a bit different. So if you, if you just, you know, know how to do Java, I would start learning other frameworks and languages as well. Because that is not only, that is not going to help you, you know, in itself. Uh, because there's a lot of people who know how to code in, with Java or, uh, you know, JavaScript or, or other, other kind of basic, uh, more basic level lang languages. So um, take that into account. Uh, secondly, I, as a disclaimer, even though I'm saying that the job opportunities and the job market is really, um, really nice, that still doesn't mean that everyone gets a job. You need to be good at what you do, because if you're not good at what you do, no one wants to hire you. So it doesn't matter if you have a degree from Harvard. If you if you suck at what you do, you will not get a job. So take this into account as well. Cool. But I, I think we have a lot of new people in the in the stream. Uh, welcome. Um, if you are new to the channel, welcome to the, the channel. If uh, we're meeting for the first time, my name is Oliver and I'm a master's student at, uh, in economics at Aalto, Aalto University in Finland. I'm about to finish my master's thesis, after which I will graduate and uh, I will start working full time. And uh, uh, during these live streams, I answer your questions about studying, living and working in Finland. And the idea here is that uh, there is a uh, Google form link in the description box below. And if you have any questions about any of the topics, please post your question into the Google form. And uh, that way I will have all the questions in front of me here on the computer and I will be able to go through them in a first come first serve basis. The reason for this is that if you post your question into the live chat, uh, the chat gets pretty busy at times and I will most likely be missing your question uh, if you post it there. Uh, also, if you are getting value out of what I'm doing here during the live streams and on the channel in general, I would love if, if you could please gently click the like button. We're currently in 27 likes and it, it would be awesome to get to 40 before we end the stream. Uh, ha <coughs> oh, excuse, excuse me. Uh, Harry, what's up? Welcome to the stream as well. Uh, we, we had a really, really awesome chat with uh, Person X to this morning. So... Uh, uh, I hope that um, uh, you're going to enjoy it. Uh, Harry saying that awesome information from Oliver. Thank you so much for for doing this stuff. Finland needs international talent and Finland needs people like Oliver. People also need uh, more people like Harry. Har Harry is actually um, working for a company called Edunation, uh, of which I've already made a couple of videos. And uh, so if you're wondering what is what is Edunation, Edunation is basically a Finnish company uh, serving international uh, prospective or um, uh, potential international students who want to study in Finland and Edunation provides them with a, with a more convenient path to, to study in Finland. And uh, no, this is not sponsored at all in any way, shape or form. Whoops. But uh, if you're interested uh, in doing a degree in Finland, um, Edunation is a really, really w good way to do it and uh, to apply to study in Finland, especially considering that the university application periods just ended in January. And uh, if you want to apply to study in Finland, uh, you would normally would need to wait until uh, September or October, I think, uh, this year to apply the next in the next application round. However, Edunation actually has still uh, a bunch of different degree applications open throughout the year so i would really really ch recommend that you check them out especially guys by the way if you're if you want to do a degree in nursing uh education has a really really good cool path to actually apply to study nursing so i would really recommend that you check it out again not sponsored at all i just like the what they're doing <coughs> Aryuna, welcome to the to the stream. Awesome to have you here as well. What's up? I hope you you have had uh, a lovely last two weeks. Uh, 
just to remind you, the next uh, members only live stream will be next Tuesday at, um, I'm sorry, next uh, Wednesday. I'm sorry, next we Wednesday at 5.30 5 p.m. Uh, Eastern European time. So send me uh, questions beforehand and uh, I will be able to prepare myself a bit more for the members only live stream. Uh, you can send them to me in Discord. Uh, by the way, send me a DM on Discord if you have not yet done it. I will add you to our members channel uh, so that we can actually communicate a bit easier about the members only live streams. Cool. Uh, by the way, guys, if you just joined us, uh, there's a bunch of people. <coughs> excuse me. There's a bunch of people ask, actually asking questions in the live chat. Um, that's fine. But uh, if you want your uh, if you want your question, if you want your question answered live, please post your question into the Google form that I have linked in the description box below. That is the best way for me to answer the questions because I will have them here in front of me on the computer. Anyways, quick drink and then I'll, I'll jump to the next question. By the way, disclaimer, this is water, not beer. Disclaimer, this is not, not alcohol, it's water. <coughs> have to say that because that is a Guinness pint. <coughs> and in Finland we have pretty strict marketing laws, so I'm not advertising alcohol, I'm drinking water. It's the biggest pint that I have at the office. Um, anyways, <coughs> the next question comes from Khan, who, who is from uh, Vietnam, and uh, um, he's applying to study a bachelor's at Aalto University or Tampere University uh, the next in the next application period, and uh, is interested in the field of engineering. Nice. And the question is, what is the COVID situation in Finland? If I go to Helsinki, Finland this autumn to study, will it be possible? Uh, uh, the current situation in Finland is that we're doing good with the vaccinations. Um, the current plan, if I remember, I'll just check it right now. Uh, if you can bear with me for a moment. Mm. <coughs> just a moment. So the current uh, goal for the Finnish government or the Finnish Institute of Health and Welfare is to get 70% of adults vaccinated uh, before summer. This is the current goal. Uh, by the way, you, uh, a disclaimer, I'm not a professional in this field. I'm just relaying information that I read from the news. Please do your own research as well, uh, because the information changes from day to day. However, the current goal is that we have 70% of the adult population vaccinated by, uh, by summer. So that's looking good. Uh, it's not as high as we wished at the beginning, but some of the vac vaccine companies actually weren't able to provide enough vaccines to Europe or the European Union, as was dictated in the contracts, or at least as fast. So we're a bit behind the schedule. Um, so the current COVID situation is, is, is not as bad as, as it could be, it's still not, you know, perfect. Uh, we're basically once again in a, in a kind of a lockdown in terms of, you know, uh, internationals. However, uh, this doesn't apply to students, by the way. Um, however, uh, if you come to Helsinki, Finland, uh, the, the majority of the differences that you can actually see here is that most people actually work, off, you know, from their home. Uh, restaurants have to close quite early, um, you know, Nightclubs are not open as normal, etc. But in my honest opinion, in my personal opinion, um, <clears throat> the impact of COVID on my kind of personal day-to-day -day life is not that big. The, the one big thing that I've noticed is that I'm kind of starting to miss, you know, social interactions, like actually going out with my friends, which we're not really able to do because it's there's no point. Um, so that's, you know, that's the, the, the one thing that I would say. However, again, as I mentioned before, Finland is basically one of the top countries in the world after New Zealand, uh, South Korea, I think Vietnam and a couple of other countries in terms of how we have dealt with COVID. Again, this speaks to the efficiency of the Finnish uh, government, government and the Finnish society and the fact that we mostly follow the rules really well, com even compared to other European nations. 
and uh, <laughs> this means that we are able to get the we have been able to get the COVID situation in control quite well. Uh, but yeah, of course, this is relative. Uh, depends on on how where you're coming from and how you're looking looking at this. However, to your question, um, basically, is, is it possible for you to come to Finland to study in the in the autumn? Absolutely, yes. I I don't see any reason why it's it, it would not be. However, you might still have some classes done online. Uh, bec- there is no way for me to say for sure, but it seems that there might still be some online classes even in the autumn. Of course, we would like to get rid of that as, as fast as possible. Uh, currently, most education uh, studies are uh, mo- currently most of the courses and education is is still done o- online. Um, but of course, we hope that this will uh, the situation will be better uh, by the summer. I'm sorry, I c- cannot give you uh, give you any more specific situ- uh, information. This is just my personal take. Anyways, the next question comes from uh, Vittorio Monti. Uh, who comes from Brazil, Brazil, and uh, he is applying to study a bachelor's in international business in the Lapland, Lapland uh, University of Applied Sciences, Oulu University of Applied Sciences, or Kajani University of Applied Sciences in the next application period. Great, all great schools, good options. And uh, the question is, after completing my master's degree, can I apply for a job position in any country in U- the European Union, or will I, will I be only apply will i only be able to apply for jo- a job in finland that's that's actually a really good question i do not know the answer for this question um however <laughs> considering that after you graduate uh you're still not a european you, uh, you will not have permanent residency in 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 finland or in the european union so I'm sure that you can apply for a job in any other European Union country as well. However, you would need to still apply for a residence permit there. So I would say that in this case, it would be easier for much easier for you to actually get a. Um, uh, it would be much easier for you to get a um, job in Finland after graduating here simply because you already have a residence permit here. Um, I do not know the residence permit systems or application processes in any of the other European Union countries, so I, I really cannot comment there. However, this is my gut feeling that it would be better, easier for you to do it here. Plus, of course, since you have a degree in Finland, uh, it's easier for the companies to... Ha- it's more natural, not necessarily easier, but more natural for companies to hire you. Um as because you have a Finnish degree. Um, I'm not saying that the Finnish degree doesn't make you eligible to apply for jobs in other countries. However, if you think about an employer, for for example, in France, uh, I, I think they might be more inc- inclined to look at people who have uh, degrees from their country first. Um, not sure. This is just my gut feeling. Um, I don't know. Actually, I'm just ranting. I, Sure, you can apply for jobs from uh, the other European Union countries, but you would still need to apply for a visa, uh, you know, separately. Um, Harry is actually commenting on the the what I said just a second ago about the work deficit in the in, uh, IT industry, uh, saying that in the in a 2019 survey conducted by techno- by the Technology Association for its members member companies, <coughs> uh, the survey re- revealed that there was a 52,000 that there was 52,000 empty jobs to be filled. What? <laughs> That's crazy. Well, this just to- you know speaks to the problem that we have here. We need talented IT uh, graduates, workers in Finland. There's a massive need for people who are, are, are proficient in these different fields. And um, that also means that the salary... Uh, development and your career development can be actually really can be well can be really good here uh, simply because the the market demands that we ne- we need more people. So thanks uh, Harry for the uh, uh, for the information. I actually did not ha- have not seen that survey. By the way, Harry, if you if you actually have a link to that survey, would you like to send it to me? Th- because I would love to go through it. I I have not stumbled upon that before. Um. Anyways, the next question comes from Anand. Uh, uh, who is from uh, Anand is from India, and uh, Anand is applying for a 
master's program in life life sciences at the University of Helsinki the next up in the next application period and uh, the question is what are the social benefits that can be received by a non-european union international student from Kela my answer to this is that you're not able to apply for any social benefits from Kela as a non-european union student uh, I might not be a hundred percent correct but um there might be some exceptions to the rule. Uh, however, this is my understanding that ba basically you are not able to apply for any kind of social benefits from Gela as an international student. It's a different question if you are working uh, full time and you have a residence permit for work. In that case, the answer might be a bit different. Actually, Harry, if you if you know uh, the answer to this question it, it would be awesome if you if you could comment on this in the chat but my uh, my uh, if my memory serves me correct and again disclaimer i'm not a specialist here i'm not an expert in the uh, social benefits uh, or social services um, and benefits uh, so please visit the kela website to check this uh, and, and do your own research but if my memory serves me correct you're not entitled for any social benefits as a non-European Union student in Finland. I would need to check that later, but I, I don't have the time to go through the Gala website because there's a lot of information there. Again, my, if my memory serves, serves me correct. Uh, don't quote me on this. Um, the next question comes from, again, from Harshal uh, from India, and uh, who is applying to LUT to do a master's in data science and software engineering. And the oh actually Harry cool really nice uh, Harshal is saying that I'm applying to a course in LUT through Edunation awesome that's awesome that's really cool the course is a master's in software engineering and digital trans transformation but I want to apply for a master's in data centric engineering which is also available in LUT but not through Edunation uh, but the acceptance into the course of so software engineering will be earlier in m earlier like March compared to the data centric um, uh, engineering where I will get to know around I will get to know about the uh, admissions around June or July because of the Ju June or July right okay so uh, what uh, what uh, Harshal is saying here is that he applied for one master's program through education and the the um, admission information comes in faster which is correct and uh, but he also applied for another program through the uh, through the 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 um, separate application system, which is basically a direct application system through the Ministry of uh, Education, uh, or the I'm sorry, scratch that, which is which is done through the studyinfo.fi website. Um, can I switch from software engineering to data centric uh, engineering later, if I have already been accepted to the software engineering course? Uh, that's a great question, Harry, if you're still live and if you want to comment on this, please do. But my understanding is that you can only you can only accept one place of study per application period. So if you accept your admission to the software engineering program with, to which you applied through education, um, you cannot accept a admission, uh, an, an admission to a, another program this year. Uh, rather, you would need to apply separately next year to this uh, secondary program. This is my understanding. Actually, Harry, if you could please build on this, if you're still in online. Again, Harry is working for education, so he might know a bit better. Uh, but my understanding is, is no, you cannot accept another admission. Um, CAD Tech, uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, I, I'd, I'd love to answer your question, uh, but I have already a bunch of questions in line. So how we usually do with uh, do it, how we usually do it uh, during these live streams is that I have a Google form linked in the description box below. And uh, if you want uh, your an uh, question answered live, then um, please post your question into the Google form again, this, uh, linked in the description box below. And uh, then I will have all the questions here on my computer in front of me and I will answer all of the questions in a first come first serve basis um, 
Uh, Harshal, just please one more thing uh, to your previous question. Actually, please confirm this uh, via Edunation as well. Uh, so send Edunation an email or connect them, connect, um, connect to them uh, uh, any any way, and ask them this question directly as well. Because again, I might uh, be, uh, I might have misunderstood uh, the information that I've read. So I'm not a hundred percent sure. I'm I'm like ninety five percent sure. But please, please confirm this from Edunation. Uh, they will answer you much faster than if you send uh, an email to study info. So uh, they will be able. Edunation guys will be able to to give you a absolutely you know certainly correct answer to this question. Uh, this this is what I would uh, advise you to do. Uh, the next question comes from uh, Bhargav. Uh, Bhargav. Uh, again from India, and um, uh, Bargov is uh, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing a master's in mechanical in mechanical engineering in any school that has engineering uh, degrees. And uh, the question is, hi Oliver, uh, hello. I uh, hope you're doing great. I am actually doing cr really well. I'm a bit tired, as you can maybe see, but uh, I'm doing quite well. Thank you so much. Um, so now I'm pursuing my bachelor so currently i'm pursuing my bachelor's in mechanical engineering and i want to do my master's in mechanical engineering as well can you suggest um, me some tips to get a scholarship and uh, to a good university moreover is it worth doing a degree in that field let's start with the last question yes it is absolutely absolutely worth doing a master's in mechanical engineering in finland um, Finland is a country of engineers. We are most of our big companies are basically engineering engineering companies or technology companies, and uh, a a master's degree in engineering, whether it be mechanical or robotics or whatever it could be, that is a highly highly regarded degree, and I can definitely recommend uh, you do that. I'm actually currently working with a master's uh, with a person who has a master's in engineering, uh, specifically in mechanical engineering, and he is actually of uh, Mexican descent. So he's not a, a Finnish. Um, uh, he's not. He was not born in Finland, but he has done his schools here, and um, and uh, he is darn good at what he does. And uh, we are actually uh, we have a startup together with him and, and a couple of other guys and, and we're working on this really awesome techno technological solution. And uh, he's basically the brains behind the, the tech. So absolutely, yes. And um, uh, about the question of, um, regarding scholarships, uh, the problem here is that I cannot really tell you what the exact requirements are for a scholarship in any university in Finland simply because this is not public information. <clears throat> this does not mean that I'm not sharing it. Rather, the university universities in Finland themselves are not sharing the exact requirements for getting a scholarship. They do give you some, you know, benchmarks and some hints. Uh, however, um, the minimum requirements for getting a scholarship, that changes every single year. In addition... Um, uh, in addition, it depends also on the on the school itself because each school grants their own scholarships for their students, and their requirements uh, vary between school to school. So it's difficult to say what you can do in order to get a scholarship, uh, other than uh, you should make sure that you have really good academic academic record from your bachelor's, uh, get good recommendation letters from uh, your professors if if they are asked for. Um, if you have any work experience, that is also good. Um, then when when you need to most likely write some kind of a motivation letter, you really need to uh, do it really, really well. And what else? If you need to do any kind of an exam for the uh, application, usually in master's level applications, you only need to prove your English, English language proficiency through IELTS or SAT or TOEFL, for example. You need to really do well there as well. So just... Do your best to prepare well well enough for the application, uh, especially if you still have you have uh, uh, courses left in your bachelor's. Just try to get as good scores from those as possible, because that is definitely going to help you when you apply uh, when you apply for uh, the degree in Finland. Um, 
about the the universities one more uh, one more uh, point about your question is that i would definitely recommend that you look at the mechanical engineering master's programs at aalto university uh, they have a really good mechanical engineering program and they they are the number one university in in this field in finland it's not easy to, to get in but uh, if you get admitted to aalto university uh, you will definitely it's definitely going to be worth it um Let's see, Blaze, what's up? Welcome to the stream. You're not late at all. <clears throat> we have already gone for uh, an hour and a half, but you can always go back backwards is, uh, backwards, or watch the, the first one and a half hours in, in replay. Um, there's a bunch of questions that I've already answered, but um, again, welcome. Uh, Dennis, what's up? Also, welcome to the stream. Awesome to, to have you here again. Um, just to let you know once uh, also that I have not finished my thesis. It's almost done, but I just wanted to put my mind somewhere else for a while and, and do the stream before I, I finish it up. Cool. All right. Uh, the next question comes from Raman uh, from India. And uh, Raman is interested in the field of finance. And um, uh, he has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland. And uh, the question is, what are the benefits uh, of getting a citizenship in Finland? You can utilize Finland as a citizen. Basically, being a citizen in Finland is awesome. You first of all you get the number one most uh, uh, the one, number one most uh, highly sought after passport, which is the Finnish passport. At least the last uh, the as as I checked it the last time, uh, the Finnish passport opens the most doors in the world. Uh, compared to any any other passports <laughs> correct me if i'm wrong oh harry thank you so much for the the, the 10 euro super chat a pint of guinness thank you sir i will definitely get a pint of water when i get home this is again water i'm drinking water during the stream i'm not drinking alcohol during these live streams but that is highly appreciated. I will definitely swing by uh, the co market next to our, our home and, and get myself a pint of water. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, uh, benefits of, of getting a citizenship in Finland. Uh, first of all, um, well, there's so many things. I, I could talk about this for an hour. Harry, if you have any, any points about benefits of getting a citizenship in Finland, just please, you know, throw a couple of them in, in the chat. But for example, you know, if you want to raise a family, uh, if, if and when you want to raise a family, if you are a citizen in Finland and, and your ch child uh, is born here and they become a citizen, um, a citizen of Finland, they will be able to enjoy the same benefits as we have, uh, you know, as born Finns. Uh, free education, free health care. Um, what else? Uh, da, 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 da. All the all the different benefits. I it's a, it's such a wide question. There's a bunch of different uh, things. You become an, a European Union national uh, or citizen, so you can travel around the European Union freely, which is you know also awesome. So you basically become a citizen in other countries as well. Not really, but kinda. Uh, what else? I don't know. It's really difficult. It's a di really difficult question to ask from a Finnish person because we are so biased. And we don't really, I think that it's the problem is that we don't really appreciate all the things that you guys pr would appreciate as citizens because we are kind of, we're so used to it. Mm. Uh, Amelia asking, is the School of Arts in Helsinki good? Uh, so the School of Arts, if you mean the university, uh, the School of Arts at Aalto University, it's the best, one of the best in the world, actually, um, according to rankings. So absolutely, it's it's really, really good. So it, it's not easy to get in at all, but uh, it's it's one of the best uh, art schools in, in the world currently. Absolutely. Uh, anyways, the next question comes from Lucas from uh, Lithuania. And Lucas is applying to study a bachelor's. In eSports, actually, I, I remember you, Lucas. Lucas has been in the stream uh, multiple times. And uh, anyways, Lucas is applying for a bachelor's in eSports at the uh, Kajani University. And uh, the question is, how much is relevant? How much is it relevant to know Finnish and Swedish languages on basic level in order to find part-time jobs and pay for li uh, living expenses in Finland? 
Uh, this is a really good question, and I, I could talk about this for hours um, because it's it's such a multifaceted and complicated question to answer. So I I, I need to s simplify this answer quite a bit. Um, if you know Finnish or Swedish, you, there's absolutely no reason to know you know speak both. Um, and of course, you you should always prioritize Finnish over Swedish simply because. Even though Swedish is also an official language in Finland, uh, it's it's not the official business language usually. So you in Finland, uh, you know, basically in almost every company, the business language is either Finnish or English. Um, again, don't quote me on this, but this is basically how it is. Um, so I would definitely learn Finnish. Plus, it, it makes your life easier uh, to take into account that not. All Finnish Finns speak Swedish. Only a minority of Finns speak uh, speak uh, Swedish uh, fluently or as they as their native tongue. So um, it's a minority language, even though it's an official language. So Finnish, learn that. And um, uh, knowing Finnish on basic level is helpful, definitely for finding a part time job, especially in if if you're doing a bachelor's and and that you're looking for a part time job outside of your own field. So, for example, if you look at like the service sector, like, um, you know, working in a bar, a restaurant, a clothing store or any kind of a convenience store, a convenient, convenience store, uh, anything like this, um, then that that is definitely going to help you. Um, uh, however, I would say that it's not necessary. It, it makes it easier to find these basic level jobs. But then when the further you progress in your career uh, of uh, the the less you're going to need Finnish or Swedish. Uh, Lucas actually is saying that I know Swedish on on a basic level. Well, that's actually good. So that that is definitely going to help you. However, I would say that Swe speaking Swedish while not speaking Finnish only helps you if you live in the west western coast of Finland, uh, for example, in Vasa, because uh, uh, Swedish is actually more common in the on the western coast of Finland. Um, because it's next to Sweden, <laughs> and um, their you know speaking Swedish uh, without speaking Sp Finnish is actually a really good you know tool. However, if you want to work part time in Helsinki, the majority of people in Helsinki do not speak Swedi uh, Swedish, and if you would try to serve people in Swedish in in Helsinki, that that would not work uh, unless you would hap happen to have a Swedish Finnish person that you would you, you are serving. So. I would definitely prioritize Finnish. Um, however, learning and knowing how to speak Swedish is absolutely not a bad thing. It's definitely going to be help you in the long term. Um, however, to your question about part-time jobs, um, I would say that Finnish is uh, uh, more useful unless you live in, 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 in a city like Vasa, where uh, Swedish is, is quite common. Um, the next question comes from Koala. Uh, from Tunisia, and uh, Kaola is uh, interested in doing a PhD in architecture, uh, in specifically in urban design and city planning. And uh, the question is, I'm an architect and PhD, PhD student in Istanbul, uh, where I have a scholarship, and I hope to apply for a scholarship to continue my studies in Finland. What should I do and where exactly to look for opportunities? Um... That's a good question. That's also a question that I, I cannot really comment too much because I, I don't have experience in um, uh, applying for financing or, or grants for, uh, for PhDs. Uh, however, what I would recommend you to do is to check out Aalto University. Uh, Aalto University's uh, School of Architecture is the best architectural university in, in Finland. And I, I definitely recommend you check them out. Uh, they do have, if you just Google Aalto University, uh, PhD architecture, and for example, grants, you will get to their page where they talk about the different grant options for their PhD students. Um, in terms of the PhDs in Finland, I will make some videos about it later this year. Again, I'm not a you know expert in this field, so I don't talk about them that much. Uh, however, uh, I would say that, um, the, uh, what, what should I say here? 
yeah, it, it's really hard to comment for me to comment anymore on, on this topic. So I would say that check out Alda University uh, if you want to do a PhD in arc or if you want to continue your PhD in architecture in Finland. Uh, it's the best school for that. They have really good gr- uh, uh, scholarship and grants, uh, really good scholarships and grants for PhD students. Um, you know, cr- uh, across the bro- board, and um, I think for more information, I, I recommend that you connect uh, connect them that you contact them directly uh, because they will be able to give you the most information on this topic. Again, uh, I'm not an expert in in PhDs in Finland. Actually, my brother is doing his PhD in in biology, but we don't talk about the, that topic that much. So there is not that much information that I'm able to able to share. Um, Yevgenia saying that Lucas um, in in Samk there is an open university where you can uh, find Finnish courses of various levels. All of them are free. And uh, Harry is also saying that that is correct. That's actually a very very good point, and I always forget to bring this up. Thanks, Yevgenia, for for bringing it for bringing this up again. So actually, uh, let me just um, let me just show you this really quickly. So if you go just Google Xamk uh, with a with an X, uh, Xamk op- Open University, and uh, let's see, whoops, Finnish. You should find. Mm, right here. So you actually you can actually get um, uh, see the information on how much you can actually get a uh, how much does a, a um, uh, how how do how much do the courses in the open university actually uh, pay cost, and what kind of studies you can actually do in the open university? Uh, I would need to go dig a bit deeper to actually get into the specific courses, but uh, Yevgenia is absolutely correct. I would definitely recommend everyone to check out the some open university. Uh, I'm I'm sorry, uh, the open university courses from the some University of Applied Sciences, uh, and uh, uh, their uh, Finnish uh, language courses. Again. The, one of the benefits of doing, you know, uh, Finnish language courses from through a university or University of Applied Sciences in Finland is the fact that you have the best teachers in the world teaching you. So you don't have to, you know, just learn from from tools that you find on the internet. Like, um, uh, well, for example, I have a video on the on the channel where I talk about different free tools that you can use to learn Finnish. However, those are free and they're pretty limited. So actually using a course, uh, Finnish language courses, for example, from some uni- University of Applied Sciences and their open university is one of the best ways for you to learn Finnish already before you come to Finland and even after that. So so definitely recommend it. <laughs> oh, Aaron, what is up? Welcome back to the stream. Well, awesome to have you here as well. Uh, it's been a long time, uh, a couple of weeks. Uh, I, I had to take a, a week off uh, because I've been trying to finish my thesis. It's not done yet. Uh, it's almost done. Uh, maybe it takes a couple of weeks to finish it up and, and you know polish everything. But I'm I'm really really trying to get it done so that I can I can graduate finally. Anyways, the next question comes from Arthur. Who again? Welcome, Arthur. Uh, Arthur is a is a regular on the channel. Um, for those of you who do not know who Arthur is, he's uh, he's uh, from Brazil and applying to uh, YUM, University of Applied Sciences, in the next application period to study business. And uh, the question is, how is the student life in Yuvaskula? Good question. Um, unfortunately, I have not been in Yuvaskula uh, campus, the, uh, on the uni- Yuvaskula campus myself, and I actually don't have anyone that I know who has studied in Yuvaskula. So I cannot say. However, what I can say is that uh, the Finnish university student life is awesome anywhere you go. Of course, it depends a bit on the campus and, th- and the school, how active the st- uh, student life is. But if, if you study, uh, you know, uh, at Yamk, at I'm pretty sure that they're going to have pretty, pretty, pretty active student organizations there, which means that you are going to have a very active student life. Doesn't only mean partying, you know, and alcohol. Uh, it's it's a lot of other things as well. You know, um, you might, for example, participate in, in different kind of clubs or or volunteer jobs or other kind of student activities, whether it be sports, you know, sciences, um, 
what else? Uh, for example, uh, just just to give you an example, at Alta University, we have different kind of clubs from shooting to horse riding to chess to sailing to skiing to um, investing. So everything, you know, that you can actually think of. So there's, there's a, you know, bunch bunch of stu stuff that you can do. So again, I cannot talk to you about Uvascular personally, but I would I would say that uh, uh, it's definitely going to be good. <coughs> uh, ES, I'm actually having, currently we have um, around 20-ish questions in the queue. Uh, there's uh, more coming all the time. So it, it's going to take a while to get through all of this. I'm not sure if I'm able to go through all the questions during the live stream. But uh, if you had a question here already, then I'm sure that I'm, I'm be, uh, able to go through it or get to it before we end the stream, um, if, if that was your question. Um, Sema, what's up? Uh, Sema saying, hi, Oliver, I'm a Sema, Sema from Belgium, economics and health policy master student, a master student, in, a master student in economics and health policy. I'm considering to do an in internship in healthcare. Do you have some experience with internships in Finland? Um, <coughs> uh, yes, I do, but it's been a while. Uh, that I, uh, I've done my internship, uh, but however, I have no experience in the internships in the healthcare sector. Uh, the thing is that the healthcare sector is heavily regulated in Finland and in, in order for you to do an internship, depending on what the specialization and the field is, um, it might require you to have certain uh, um, certifications. However, if your uh, studies are focusing on business, then that's not a problem for you. Um, what I would rec recommend you to do is to make a list of companies that you want to intern at. And then, first of all, keep a, keep an eye out on, on their website, uh, on their recruit uh, jobs website, as well as contact them directly and um, ask them when and where, uh, when uh, they open, when are they going to open their internships the next time so that you can actually apply for them. Um, if you have any, any you know, more specific questions about this, uh, I would be glad to, to answer them, but you would need to be a bit more specific because this is such a wild, uh, wide topic. Um, if, you, uh, if, I don't, if I'm not able to come uh, get to your question here in the live, uh, make sure to join our Discord server. Uh, talking of which, if, if there's anyone in the live stream currently who is not a member of our Discord server, server. Uh, there's a link in the description box below to join. The server is basically, or the idea of the server is to build a community of people who are interested in studying and working in Finland. And in the server, we, uh, I, I only, not only post updates about videos and upcoming live streams, but we also have a lot of more, you know, uh, intimate, uh, uh, personal chat about different kind of topics. And we have multiple different channels about different topics like admissions, uh, you know, life in Finland, uh, university studies in Finland, and people ask questions and, and I answer some of them, uh, but then other internationals answer some of the questions as well. So it's, it's we're building a community. So make sure to join the, the, the server from the link below. Uh, Miska Sarkinen uh, is saying, not a question, but just wanted to say that this channel and its purpose is pretty awesome. Here not. Thanks, Miska. That is really, really cool, cool to hear. Thanks so much for the positive feedback. Um, uh, if you have any questions or uh, actually if you have any comments to any of the internationals that we have here, for example, you know, any reasons why you should actually do a, a degree in Finland, I, I'd love uh, if you could participate and, and maybe throw in a couple of, you know, insider tips or, or things that you know. Anyways, 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 the next question in the form <coughs> comes from... Oh, by the way, actually, Harry is saying here, thanks again, Harry, for um, joining the or participating in the discussion. Harry is saying specifically to Harshal and anyone else applying through Edunation. You can ask from our team about your program and everything by email at contact at edunation.co. Uh, Yeselin and others are happy, happy to help. Absolutely. So, guys, if you have any questions about the Edunation programs, uh, doesn't matter whether you have applied through them or not. If you have any questions about Edunation or the application system that they have or the program programs that they offer through their partner universities, uh, just email these guys uh, at contact at edunation.co and they will be able to help you out. 
Um, even though I, I do have some information about education and I've spoken to Harry before, uh, they're still the experts on this topic, so um, uh, they will be able to help you. Of course, if you have any, any questions about education and you want to ask them from me, be my guest. But if, if you don't mind, if I do not know the answer, I can also relay those questions back to Harry or their team at education. And uh, then I will be able to provide you with uh, some kind of an answer, for example, in the Discord server. So, you know, uh, any, any way is fine. But uh, of course, uh, co uh, direct, uh, contacting them directly is always easier, easier and faster for you as well. Anyways, the next question comes from Kazi Nadim Hossain, who comes from Bangladesh. And uh, he is applying to the Centria University of Applied Sciences in the next application period to do a bachelor's in business administration. Awesome. Um, the question is, as I've already applied in, in the January application uh, period to Centria University at Kokkola for August 2021 se uh, season, how much good and affordable... I'm sorry, um, how good and how affordable is the Kokkola city for living? Uh, another really good question. Unfortunately, I have no previous personal experience uh, living in Kokkola. I've, um, I've never actually been to Kokkola myself, so it's really difficult for me to say. Um, the level of, uh, I'm sorry, the quality of living in Finland is in general very high. Uh, compared to any Western country. So I would not be worried about that at all. Um, of course, the larger the city in Finland, the more usually uh, there are companies there present. Uh, for example, in the capital region, of course, because it's it's the capital region and, and we, it's the, it's a, you know, Helsinki, the capital and the, the cities around it is, is a massive area. We have a lot of employees here or companies here presenting. Uh, which means that we have a lot of different jobs in Helsinki area. However, that does not mean that, for example, in Kokkola or Jyväskylä or Vasa or Oulu, these other cities, you would not have any other, uh, you know, uh, job opportunities. They're smaller cities. They don't necessarily have the job market that the Helsinki area has. But uh, I would say that the quality of living in any city outside of Helsinki is is still really good if you, you know, look at this on an international level. So I would not be worried about that at all. Uh, then about the question about the affordability or the, the co li um, cost of living there, it's again really hard for me to say this. Uh, my benchmark guidance for any international students is to, if you want to, you know, live comfortably uh, without having to worry about, you know, rent or your bills, and be able to, you know, travel, have a lot of, have a bit of fun, you know, go par partying with your friends, etc. Then a good benchmark is around 800 euros per month. <laughs> this is actually quite a lot of money and that's quite a, a, quite a good amount of money in Hels even in Helsinki. So for example, in Kokkola, I would think that that's, that's quite a lot of money per month. So it's not necessary to have that. You can go, uh, come by with a smaller amount. However, uh, since I would, of, of course, recommend that you try to experience Finland as a whole as well. Travel within Finland, travel within the Nordics, travel within Europe while you're studying here. I would recommend that you save as much, much money beforehand as possible so that you can actually enjoy the country as well. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Misko saying, uh, just a tip for any foreigners coming to Finland in general, don't be disappointed if you don't make friends right away. Once you do, I promise the Finns are very fr friendly people. That's actually a really good point, and this is actually something that people ask me all the time um, about the non-social or uh, extroverted uh, Finns. Um, th I think that's a bit of a myth. Uh, so when you move to Finland, it is true that we are not usually the ones who initiate a social relationship you know, a friendship. And it, it's also true that it takes quite a lot of time to actually become, you know, a good friend of a fin Finnish person. Uh, and it takes a quite a lot, of, a lot of effort. However, once you become a friend of a Finn, you will have a friend for a lifetime. And, and the, the, the really cool thing about Finnish people as friends is that the, you know, the fi friendship in Finland is not based on a you scratch my back, I scratch your back mentality. 
um, where you know you give and take back and forth. Rather, you know, when you are friend friend with a Finnish person, uh, the you help each other out, no matter you know the the issues without the expectance uh, without expecting something in in return. So this is especially cool for people who come from cultures where, you know, uh, social circles and friendships are built based on uh, this kind of um, um, a social system where uh, personal relationships are based on you giving something away, basically. So, yeah, it, it takes a while to, uh, to uh, befriend Finns, but... Uh, uh, I would not be be, uh, worry, uh, be worried about it at all. Mm. Cool. Next question comes from Harry from Hong Kong. Welcome, Harry from Hong Kong. Uh, it's awesome to have you here again. Uh, Harry is interested in doing a master's in education. And uh, the question is, I would like to know more about the secondary education in Finland. Suppose I already obtained a professional status required to teach in Finland and, and I have a B1 level um, and I have achieved B1 level if in Finnish. Are there any local or secondary schools uh, other than international schools taught uh, that 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 teach science subjects such as chemistry in English? Or in other words, do you see any foreigners teaching teaching subjects other than English in local schools? That's mm, that's a really 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 good thing. A uh, question I. It's really uh, difficult for me to speak on this personally because it's such it's been such a long time since I've been to secondary school and since I don't have any uh, any kids of my own um I have not been able to speak or uh, of course I have no experience on on that myself and I actually actually don't have any close friends who had would have kids in secondary school so it's really difficult for me to say um what I do remember is that since I went to a I went to a public school, basically a Finnish school, but with uh, which uh, was an international school in a sense. Um, I think all of our teachers were still Finnish, except the language teachers. This is a really difficult question uh, for me to answer because I, I, it's been such a long time, and and I'm sure that the secondary schooling system has changed since i i graduated from there so hard to say hard to say um yeah really really difficult to say uh unfortunately i, I can't really help here i'm sorry i'm not, not able to answer your question but i i don't want to give you false information either um anyways the next question comes from uh sashank from nepal and uh, sashank is is applying I'm sorry, has not yet decided whether or not he wants to study in Finland, but is interested in doing a master's in forest sciences or geoinformatics. Nice, that's cool. Uh, in uh, Aalto University, the University of Helsinki or University of Eastern Finland. Nice. All right. That's super interesting. Um, the question is, can students get part-time jobs without, the fin uh, without learning the Finnish language? And is career in forestry great in Finland? Um, Sashank. Um, okay, first of all, let's take this the first question first, and then I'll I'll, um, I'll stonk on you. So, <laughs> no, uh, you do not need to learn Finnish in order to do a well uh, do well in Finland in your career. It is highly recommended, not because not uh, because you you would need it. However, uh, you it will definitely help you integrate better into the society. Uh, as well as you will get more out of your experience in Finland if you learn at least some basic day-to-day -day Finnish. No need for learning uh, uh, native-level Finnish. However, being able to, you know, uh, do basic day-to-day -day conversations, and for example, if you have, like, uh, friends who sometimes speak Finnish, even if you're there, you might underst un un understand at least something of uh, what they're t talking about. So definitely recommended. And the good thing is, is that if and when you're admitted to study at a Finnish university, I uh, you can you are also allowed to take Finnish language courses at the school as a part of your curriculum, which is really cool because a once again you have the best teachers Finnish language teachers in the world. Second, you will have a class full of people who are in the same situation as you are. Uh, third, you can actually 
uh, count the credits from those courses towards your your degree. So you were you were you will basically get degree. You will um, progress with your degree by learning Finnish, which is really nice. And then fourth, of course, the uh, language courses would be included in your uh, degree, so there's no extra cost. So four really important reasons why you should absolutely study at least some basic uh, Finnish in school. And now to the question, is a career in forestry or in a, the forest industry good uh, a good option in Finland? I'm not actually sure of the the, the current numbers. Mm. Let's see. Mm. The forest industry, this comes from the Finnish Forest Industries website. The forest industry is a major contributor to well-being in Finland. The sector accounts for over 20% if of Finland's export revenue and it is a major employer, especially in regional areas. Out of fi- the, the Finland is the size of Germany, in geographic, uh, geographically speaking, and uh, 75% of Finland is covered in forests. We are the forest nation. We are a nation of forest, and a huge percentage, 20% to be exact, out of our exports is actually forest, uh, comes from the forest industry. So absolutely, yes, Finland is the best place in the world Finland is the perfect place to study forestry or forest sciences or geoinformatics or anything that has to do anything with the forest industry. So absolutely yes, uh, you need to, uh, you you should definitely get a degree in forest industry in Finland. You will have a very good, successful career here uh, if you do that. Absolutely yes. Uh, uh, Harry saying, Kitos, I know my question is not easy and you have tried your best. Appreciate your attitude and, and will to continue to and will continue to support your work. Uh, Harry, I, that I really appreciate it. Um, again, there's, um, you know, studying, working and uh, living in Finland is such a wide range of... There's so, so many different topics and it's such a wide range of topics that uh, um, there's quite a lot of kind of more small detailed questions where I do not know the answers and uh, I, I do... Uh, appreciate the support, even though I'm, I don't have uh, all the answers to everything. Yevgenia um, also saying, kaksi kahvia maidon kanssa ja kaksi pullaa kiitos. Yeah, that's uh, in Finnish. Uh, that's Finnish, meaning two coffees with milk and uh, two uh, pastries. Thank you. Or, yeah, that's that's really cool. cool. And um, basically, if you know that, you can survive in any Finnish uh, city. That's pretty much true. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, the next question comes from. Uh, I'm sorry for butchering your name. Uh, please correct me in the chat uh, if I'm not uh, pronouncing your name correctly. Uh, Sumaya, um, Sumaya, Sumaya, Sumaya. Uh, there's two two Y's. I'm not quite quite sure how to pronounce it. Sumaya Rahman. Sumaya Rahman. Uh, or uh, is the is the R a rough R like Rahma, uh, or is it a uh, Ra? Not quite sure. Uh, anyways, Sumaya comes from Bangladesh, and um, is uh, she is applying to study a master's in machine learning and artificial in- intelligence. Awesome, in um, at Aalto University in the next application period. Nice. AI is the is the future. Uh, talking of which, Edunation has a really uh, interesting path to a bachelor's in AI. If anyone is interested. Uh, recommend to check it out. It, you can find it from edunation.co. Um, anyways, the question is, I'm currently in my last year in university. I want to apply for a 100% scholarship. What should I prepare from now? Good question. Hard question. Uh, it's I- impossible for me to give you a direct and... Consi- um, it's impossible for me to give you a... Uh, you know, a holistic answer here. Uh, because the, the, the question is to difficult. Uh, the reason is that scholarships in Finland are granted by the universities themselves. So for example, in your case, the scholarship would actually come from Aalto University itself, not the government. Uh, this means that the that each of the universities in Finland have uh, different and very specific uh, requirements for their scholarships. Uh, so basically that means that the scholarships are granted on, on um, different bases depending on what university you're applying to. However, the problem is 
the reason why I cannot answer this question, you know, directly is that simply that the exact requirements for gr getting a scholarship is not public information. The universities are not uh, required to publicize the specific requirements um, for their scholarships, meaning that I have n there's no way for me to say for sure how to how to prepare. However, what I can give you as advice is simply make sure that your academic record in your bachelor's degree is as good as possible. Make sure that you are able to get, if required, a, re a letter of recommendation from one of your professors at uh, that taught you the bachelor's. Um, make sure to start learning how to write a good motivation letter. Uh, that might be required as well. Uh, in addition, if you're able, try to accumulate at least some work experience if possible. Again, that might be also a positive for you as well. And uh, then try to start thinking about why do you actually want to come uh, to do a degree in Finland? Because if you uh, if you get to an interview, this I'm not, again, don't quote me on this, I'm pretty sure they will ask you, why do you want to come to study in Finland? And, you know, of course, if you get to an interview and this is asked from, from you, interviews are a way to separate the best people from the pack. You have already been cleared uh, on paper that you're good enough for on paper. And then they, uh, with the interview round, if there is an interview round, uh, they will then try to figure out who are the best suitable, uh, the most suitable ca candidates for that university. And you will you will need to have a reason for you to want, uh, want to come to Finland and study specifically at all the university. So my personal tips, again, these are not based on personal experience. These are mostly per based on... Uh, understanding how the education system in, in Finland works and how the how for example recruitment works so um, take that with a grain of salt but again I, I hope that that gave you a bit of context at least all right um, the next question comes from Ayush uh, uh, and I'm again sorry for butchering your last name uh, Ayush Bhattarai Bhatt Bhattarai Darn, this, uh, uh, the amount of consonants is difficult. Bhattarai. Uh, Bhattarai. Bhattarai or Bhattarai? Not, not quite, quite sure. Uh, anyways, Ayush uh, is from Nepal and is already studying in Finland uh, at doing a bachelor's at the univer uh, Oulu University of Applied Sciences and uh, specifically in information technology. Nice. And uh, the question is, how is the online group interview at uh, the University of Applied Sciences conducted? Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any any knowledge about this. Uh, if you mean technically, it might be on Zoom or via Zoom. Um, however, I do not know how it's conducted and what kind of questions they will be asking. Uh, I'm trying to be an o trying to be honest here. I simply don't have any prior experience in this myself. Um, anyways, the next question comes from Moha uh, Al Oidat uh, Al Oidat Al Al Oidat. Al Oudat, Al Oudat, Al Oudat. Darn you guys, <laughs> I'm really struggling here. Uh, Moha, Al Oudat, Al Oudat. Please correct me in the chat. Uh, please, please do. Uh, I'm sorry for butchering all of your names. Um, we have a wide range of people from around the world. So, uh, anyways, uh, Moha comes from Jordan, Jordan, and uh, is applying to study a master's in nutrition, uh, nutritional sciences in uh, the University of Helsinki, I guess, and. Uh, the question is, do uni Finnish universities provide a good number of fully funded scholarships or are they very limited? Um, that's a good question. I would say that they are limited, but uh, the this would again uh, depend on the university itself. Um, but if, you, if you're talking about a fully funded scholarship in terms of 100% of the tuition fee, yeah, they are limited. Uh, but again, the numbers are not public, so it's really difficult for me to say for sure. But... Um, <laughs> my my be be best advice here is that you really need to work hard if you want to get a fully funded scholarship to to any kind of a university in Finland. Um, anyway, I hope that that gave you at least some context. Um, e ES saying that can we get to fifty likes? we and we jumped directly over to fifty five likes. Thank you so much, guys. That's that's actually really awesome. Uh, let's actually take uh, sixty likes as the next goal. I think I think our go uh, I think our highest amount of likes during the live stream itself is 70 likes I think or 60 likes 
likes maybe but it would be awesome to get to 60 uh, during the stream um one more thing uh before i'll, I'll take water uh a super quick break uh just to get my brains uh fixed because i'm i'm starting to get quite tired uh Meanwhile, super quick uh, note about uh, the channel memberships. Uh, so once again, if, if you guys are um, actually getting value of, of these kind of live streams and, and uh, you know, the content on, on the channel in general, I would, of course, really appreciate if you guys would consider uh, becoming uh, joining uh, the channel as a member. So what you can do is you can click this join button under any of the videos or the join button here on the channel itself and um, by clicking the join button you can actually see all the different perks of becoming a member uh, there's currently four different membership levels and for example if you become a Gandhi or undergrad member uh, you will get access to the members only live streams which we do once a month and um, the, the benefit of those live streams is that we have quite a less people in the live streams and uh, I actually get th the questions beforehand or before the stream itself. So I will be able to prepare for the questions already beforehand. So they're not off the cuff like this, meaning that I can actually bring you more value during the live streams uh, for just the members. Anyways, I would really appreciate if you guys uh, would consider uh, joining the channel as a member uh, that would support the channel and you will also get a number of different perks and um, again i would appreciate it but if you don't uh, want to or you're not able to that's fine i still appreciate you being here uh, you guys are the only reason why i'm actually able to do this full time as a job which is a bit of a dream come true um, the next question comes from uh, Shrikant uh, uh, Gangda Gangdahara and uh he's coming from india and ha not has india and has war <laughs> let's do that again uh shrikant is from india and he has not yet decided whether or not he has uh, what he wants to study in finland but is interested in doing a master's level degree in civil engineering there good the question is I want to do a master's in civil engineering in environment in the environmental field. Uh, so I decided to do in it in a, in a foreign country, but which one I am not yet decided. Uh, tell me how it will be in Finland in terms of employment opportunities. So civil engineering is of course a very important field in Finland. Of course, you know in terms of. Uh, in designing and engineering the in, in entire civil and public inf infrastructure but also in terms of other types of types of projects so i would say that as a master's in as a master's graduate in civil engineering again disclaimer if you know what you're doing if you're proficient at what you do you can have really really good job opportunities here in finland uh, the one thing that you should note is that some positions in uh, in the field of civil engineering do require at least some Finnish uh, language skills. However, those are mostly jobs that require you to be in direct contact with customers or with other stakeholders. So, for example, if you're uh, uh, the leading lead engineer in a, in a massive civil engineering project where you have a lot of different companies and offices working together, uh, improving the infrastructure for example uh, uh, let's say for example in a tunnel um, then you would most likely need to communicate at least to some of them in Finnish however as uh, if, if you when you graduate as a master's in civil engineering you will most likely you, you know be working in the back office working on, on for example on the designs depending on, on what you specialize in and uh, that will not re um, require you to to speak finish however in that specific specific field when you progress enough uh, it might be that you so might need some finish at least not n you absolutely don't have to be native or fluent but you know at least some basic finnish language skills are going to be useful but yeah definitely civil engineering doing a master's here 
there's really nothing else for me to say. It absolutely will have good career opportunities with a disclaimer, once again, as long as you know what you're doing. Uh, again, having a degree from Harvard will not get a job. Your job, um, you still need to know what you're doing. Um, anyways, the next question comes from Edwards from Cameroon. And uh, Edwards is looking to do a computer uh, master's in computer engineering at Aalto University. And uh, he's starting school this semester. Nice. And uh, there's a couple of questions. Let's go through these one by one. So you mentioned Java as a basic language to learn in order to be competitive in the job market. From your opinion, what's the language to learn in order to be competitive? Uh, that's a really good question. I cannot go too deep into this because I would actually need to look into this a bit more. However, um, uh, uh, just let me think for, for a second. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, just a moment. Let's see. Just a moment. I need to dig a bit deeper because I, I did have this information a while ago. I just need to dig it up from somewhere. I don't remember where it was. Um, just a moment. Uh, Yevgenia, if you happen to remember where I actually had the, the link to the most common programming languages in Finland, let me know. Um, I did find a list at some point, but I, I cannot find it right now. <coughs> but if, okay, if, well, here is uh, basically the, um, th there's an article from 2017, so that's actually too old. Um, let's see, one more thing. Mm. Yeah, I would I would need to get back to this because there's so many uh, I cannot find the information. However, uh, from this is from 2007, so this is already all old information. However, uh, the most used and most common la uh, programming languages in Finland uh, in 2017 were JavaScript, uh, JavaScript, PHP, Java, Python, C Sharp, C++, C, Ruby, Objective C. Swift, Scala, and Clojure. Uh, Clojure. Uh, however, those have changed since. I know that, for example, Node has be become really popular. Uh, but of course, PHP, Java, JavaScript, uh, all of these like basic languages, they are really, really good for you to know anyways. Uh, however, ho however, there's a bunch of different languages that you, you if you want to really do a really, really good career and get those good monies. Uh, for example, I would say that mobile development so learning how to code Android uh, on Android and, and then on iOS and, for example, Mac, meaning basically Swift and Metal. Uh, those are the really hot languages that that uh, uh, there is a huge demand for because no university in Finland actually teaches you to learn uh, to, to program in uh, sw um, with Swift. So that's definitely something for you. Um, anyways, I have to uh, move on. So the next question was about student accommodation. How does it take place? Are there any particular services for that or any student support services? Yes, good question. So, <clears throat> so how student apartments work in Finland is that uh, universities themselves do not uh, have any kind of dormitories or do uh, you know apartments uh, themselves. That's not how it works in Finland. In Finland, student apartments are provided by specific organizations that only provide student apartments. Um, these include non-profits as well as uh, student unions and student organizations. Uh, for example, if you come to do a degree in Aalto University, which is in the Helsinki region, you have basically two different options. Uh, your first option is HOAS, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, sponsors on the channel, hashtag, hashtag this is not sponsored. 
uh, but I, I live in a HOAS apartment myself. HOAS is a non-profit which is actually owned by student organizations in Finland. So they're basically owned by students in Finland. Uh, and they have a, <coughs> they are the biggest student apartment provider in the Helsinki region. And they have really, really good and really, really affordable apartments around the Helsinki capital region. The se second option for you is Aalto University Student Union housing uh, system. So the in Finland, each university has a student union by law. Uh, uh, and uh, each uh, many of the student unions in Finland actually have their own student apartments and AYY or the other university student union is one of them. So you can apply for their apartments as well. They have uh, a, a bit over 2,500 apartments in the metro metropolitan area. So how this works is that depending on where you apply, uh, you you have to apply as soon as you have heard of your uh, admission. So the moment that you get your admission letter, you should apply. Uh, for example, with AYY, you can apply the second that you learn that you have been admitted. So you don't have to have a residence permit yet, nothing like that. You, you just need to know that you have been admitted by the university. However, with HOAS, I know that you can apply uh, to their apartments at earliest, I think it was four months before you actually need the apartment. So four months before you come to Finland. Uh, and basically how you apply is, is they have their uh, specific application uh, form, uh, format, um, uh, application form that you need to fill in. You need to fill in your personal information, the information about your school, etc., etc. And then they will confirm that you are actually an admitted student at that university. And then uh, you will be and that, that you're eligible to apply for their apartments. So those are the two options for you. Uh, uh, if you do not apply for student apartments in time, uh, you will most likely be left without one because there is only a limited amount of apartments. And um, uh, just a, as a you know warning, if you don't, <coughs> excuse me, if you're not able to apply and get a an student apartment, you will need to ha um, apply for an apartment from the private sector, which is going to cost you at least double the price of a student apartment of, of, of from the same area. So you're being warned. Uh, then the third question, the COVID situation. If I come from a country with neither COVID testing available nor vaccinations, how will my entrance take place? Um, this is such a specific to uh, question that I will not answer this here. Uh, I, I don't want to comment on this. Please uh, check out the uh, website <coughs> uh, of the Finnish Institute of Health and Welfare, thl.fi forward slash en. They are the Finnish uh, governmental uh, organization uh, dealing with COVID. They will have up-to-date information and the latest uh, updates on this topic. And they will they also have the information on on the different restrictions and, uh, for example, the travel. So, for example, here, travel. Uh, so they will have all the answers for you. The, for you, the they up update the website every single day, and I will not comment on such a top specific topic. A because I don't have the information, and B because this answer, uh, the answer is going to be incorrect already tomorrow, and because people are watching these on replays, I don't want to comment on something that is going to be old information in in just a couple of days. All right. The next question comes from Edwards, again from Ethiopia, and uh, the question is, I have a GPA of uh, 3.45 in uh, computer engineering. I have working, I have been working as an assistant lecturer in at the university for five years now, uh, so any fully funded uh, or 100% scholarships. Hard to say, uh, sounds really good, uh, of course, uh, depending on whether your the GPA in, 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 Etho in Ethiopia whether or not the GPA in Ethiopia is from with a scale from one or zero to five or zero to four, uh, of course that's you know uh, that would uh, uh, be a bit different. Uh, however, it's impossible to say uh, for sure. This this sounds really really good. I, it seems that you have a really good uh, track record academically. You have been working at the university, so yeah, sounds really good. But uh, I would. Um, uh, I'm sorry, this question actually was from uh, um, Michelle. Uh, <coughs> Michelle from Ethiopia. So, sorry, I, I uh, mixed you with a different person. However, um, the answer is I don't know. It's, it's hard for me to say because the public, um, the information whether on the minimum requirements for a scholarship is not public. So it's really difficult for me to say. Uh, next question comes from ES. Again, from Hungary. And the question is, 
Is it possible to get a Finnish citizenship? Is ye if yes, how? Uh, yes, it is possible for you to get a Finnish citizenship. You first need to get a permanent residence permit, um, which you can get a few years after you have graduated. So when you come to Finland to study, you will get a residence permit for a student. And after you graduate, you will get a you will have to apply for a residence permit to work. And uh, once you have worked under that residence permit for X amount of years, you will be able to apply for a permanent residency. And from there, after you have had a permanent residency in Finland for X amount of years, then you can apply for Finnish citizenship. Uh, but you have to, <coughs> but you also have to learn either Finnish or Swedish to a proficient level uh, to pass the citizenship test. Uh, more information can be found on the uh, Finnish Immigration Services website. So that's migri.fi. Migri.fi. Uh, the next question comes from Sophie from Mexico, and uh, Sophie is looking to apply to the univer Tampere University to do a master's in biomedical engineering. Nice, that's really cool. And uh, the question is, do I get confirmation when the university receives my papers? Uh, they requ uh, requested to send documents by post. Um, good question. Uh, I, unfortunately, I don't know. Um, I would not expect a confirmation from them personally. Uh, again, this is not a uh, yes or no answer to your question, but I would not be expecting a confirmation from them. Uh, uh, I recommend that you reach out to them uh, with, with their um, admission email uh, directly and ask about this if you want to make sure. Uh, I don't know. <coughs> Um, the next one comes from uh, Pranav uh, Agnihotri, who is from India and uh, is interested in or, or working in the commerce economics audit industry and um, asking about the scope of CPA slash, slash ACCA in Finland. And um, uh, that is a really good question. So basically, we're talking about certified public accountant uh, certifications slash ACCA, which is uh, Association of Chartered Chartered Certified Accountants. Um, the scope of that, I don't know. Uh, unfortunately, I actually did my bachelor's in accounting, but I've never been uh, certified because I have never done my batch master's and uh, never applied for any kind of a certification. So unfortunately, I do not know the scope of the CPA or, or the AA ACCA. I've never actually even looked into the topic. Uh, so unfortunately, I can't help you there. Uh, it's a very, very specific question. And uh, I would just use Google uh, as a friend here, unfortunately. Anyways, the next question comes from Kimia from Iran. And um, Kimia is uh, applying to Aalto University to do a master's in design in the next application period. And uh, the question is, hey, Oliver, could you please talk more about the scholarships or uh, funding? How can we get accepted or on what conditions and what are the services and how can we apply for them? Um, unfortunately, I really can't help you that much here. Again, the scholarships depend on the, the type of scholarships, uh, how much they cover, how much of your costs they cover, uh, what the exact requirements are, um, how do you apply for... Uh, I'm sorry, that's actually a general thing. But So all of this information depends on the university and the degree that you're applying for. So, for example, uh, for Aalto University, I, I happen to know because I've made a couple of videos about it, or Aalto University, or Aalto University has two types of scholarships uh, that you apply for when you apply to actually study here. So you, in the application form that you fill in for Aalto University, you have to check a box to, to say that you also want to apply for a scholarship. And um, uh, those scholarships are either 50% of your tuition fee or 100% of your tuition fee, but they do not cover any of your living costs. So... Um, any kind of scholarships that cover your living costs are extremely rare. Not all universities have them. And if they have, like, uh, I know that the University of Helsinki have them, they're very, very rare and uh, they have a very limited amount of them. Uh, so, again, how do you, uh, what are the requirements for you to get a scholar scholarship? 
uh, I cannot say anything here because this this is not public information. Uh, it's not that I do I know that I and I don't want to tell you, but it's rather but rather it's that the universities do not have to disclose the the minimum requirements for their scholarships. So no one really knows unless you actually work for the university at the admission services. And uh, however, how do you apply for scholarships? Well, this depends a bit on the scholarship type. So if it's a scholarship that you apply uh, when you apply uh, at the same time w uh, that you apply for the school uh, school itself, you, ap you, uh, you apply for the scholarship with the same application form that you fill in when you apply for the university. This is really common. Uh, however, there's also uh, a lot of different scholarships for other schools um, where that you apply for after you have been admitted and after you have already started your school. For example, some schools, uh, some universities have, uh, have scholarships that you apply to after the first year. So they're basically reimbursing your tuition for, from the first year if you um, get, the, get the scholarship. However, in your case, uh, all the university scholarships uh, you apply for in the application form. However, in addition, there's also a couple of other scholarship options for Aalto. One of them is, is an incentive, scho incentive scholarship. Um, I don't rem remember the exact requirements, so just let me uh, pull it up. So um, <laughs> the incentive scholarship is a... Uh, actually, let me just... Aalto University has multiple different scholarships, and one of them is called the Incentive Scholarship Program, meaning that if you the scholarship is granted if you have completed a minimum of 60 ECTS credits of studies according to your approved personal study plan during one academic year. So 60 credits is the normal pace of studies for any student in Finland. So if you do your studies at a normal pace and you do 60 credits, you will be then awarded a... 1500 euro scholarship which is basically reimbursement for your uh, tuition fee. Uh, this is actually not re reduced from your tuition rather you will get this as cash however this this will then um, uh, you will be granted this. The cool thing is that uh, you can actually if I remember correctly you can actually apply for this every single year so um, that's that's really cool. Uh, but yeah th uh, those kind of scholarships we have have in Finland. Uh, Biruk uh, is asking, is TOEFL or IELTS exams compulsory to get admitted? Uh, depends on the school. Not all schools require IELTS and not all schools require TOEFL. Uh, it de depends on the schools and the degrees that you're applying for. So it's impossible for me to say for sure, um, uh, you know, anything else rather than it de depends on the school. So you need to first check out these specific requirements for the school that you're interested in. Anyway, the next question comes from Rish from India. Uh, who is interested in doing a master's in data sciences. And um, the questions are, Moi Oliver, I recently studied all the application processes from applying and to submitting all my documents. It was a hasty one because I applied to almost every university in Finland, hoping to get admitted and start my studies this autumn. Awesome. Uh, autumn. Fingers, fingers crossed. Absolutely. So my question is that uh, I want to know more about the word Sisu from you. The word it has always inspired me. I have included a brief description of it in my motivation letter as well. You have um, uh, you have such a positive personality. Kitos and heippa. Thank you and bye. Uh, thanks for the great question. And um, actually, this is a very interesting topic. So, guys, if you have never heard of the term sisu before, so S I S U, uh, sisu is a Finnish term meaning. There's multiple different translations for it, but it, it's usually translated to mean um, grit or courage or um, what else could it be? Um, strength, persistence, determination, willpower, perseverance, um, nerve, um, etc. Uh, so Sisu basically is a Finnish... It's a part of the Finnish psyche, psyche, and uh, a part of the Finnish, um, a part of being a Finnish person. Person. So, Sisu basically means that no matter the difficulty, no matter the crap that is, you know, thrown at you. For example, the COVID situation, 
we always pull together and uh, uh, and you know plow through it. Uh, you know, pulling together doesn't necessarily is not directly con in co connected with Sisu. But uh, the idea is that we plow through all the difficulties, no matter what they are. And um, Sisu was very sp heavily, you know, um, seen, especially in the uh, during the Second World War. Um, if you did not know, the Soviet Union actually tried to invade Finland. Uh, they made a pact with Germany, with Nazi, Nazi Germany, uh, and uh, Soviet Union attacked Finland and, and tried to invade Finland uh, in uh, what we call the Winter War. And um, they basically o overpowered us by a factor of 10, I think. And uh, we basically had no tanks. They had thousands of tanks. We had op almost no planes. They had hundreds of planes. And uh, it was uh, supposed to be a cakewalk for the Soviets to, you know, run over and, and invade Finland um, in, in just a couple of weeks. And actually it turned out uh, in, in winter war, we basically slapped the Soviets back and uh, we, we did eventually actually make a truce and we had to give them a piece of land of Finland. However, the term Sisu basically describes also the fact that a small nation like Finland was able to push back this massive force, this massive power of, of the Soviets when they plowed through everything else, even even Nazi, Nazi Germany. Uh, so not giving up in, no matter the circumstances and fighting for what is yours and fighting for um, uh, for yourself, basically. That's that's what CIS really is. And COVID, uh, I think COVID is, is a really way to, good way to see it because, again, um, while in some countries... You know, when the COVID hit, uh, some countries started questioning whether or not uh, whether or not this is actually a real thing, and and in some countries, you know, people started pr protesting because their personal rights were limited, be uh, you know, because people couldn't see each other. Um, we we don't have we ha haven't had any of this. We've been basically pulling to get together to get through this, and and the mentality of Sisu is somewhere there that. Okay, this is crap. The market crashed. Uh, everyone is feeling the pain. Doesn't matter. Let's just pull through this and and plow through the problem as good as we can, and we can we can actually make it. Uh, yeah, Yevgenia saying that there's actually a book about Sisu. I'm sure that there's multiple books about Sisu, and and actually, um, interestingly, uh, Rish, if you want to check it out, you should actually just uh, go to YouTube and and search for Sisu. And I think that there is a mu multiple different historian, historical uh, YouTube channels that explain Sisu quite well, um, which is re really, really cool. All right, uh, moving on. Yeah, no problem. I, I, I hope that this, that gave you a bit of a context. There's, of course, more to Sisu than this, but uh, just letting you know. Um, the next question comes from Mr. G. What's up, dude? Welcome back. Uh, Mr. G is from the US and A, the, the my, uh, great and mighty, uh, mighty democratic republic of, of the United States. And um, uh, Mr. G is uh, applying to Arcadia, uh, University of Applied Sciences, to study a bachelor's in business. And uh, the question is, I'm hoping to do the pathway program through education. Nice, good choice, option, which will grant me admission to Arcata in Helsinki for a bachelor's degree in business. Do you recommend this route for a native English speaker? If I'm a native English speaker, do I need to need an English language proficiency test? And if I apply for the pathway program and get accepted, do I have to apply for my degree program at Arcata as well? What about my visa? Uh, what, when would I uh, be a good time to apply for my visa and uh, if I'm accepted to the path pathway program? Uh, great questions. And uh, Mr. G, I would uh, again direct you to the education team and contact them at contact at education.co. Uh, they will be able to give you more precise answer here, uh, answers here. However... Uh, you you don't have to apply for your visa before you actually are admitted to Arcata. So basically, after you have done the pathway program and you get your admission into Arcata, um, uh, you you need to apply for your visa only after that. And the cool thing is that the education team will help you apply for the uh, visa. So that's that's really nice. Uh, at least they will give you a hand. They cannot, if I remember correctly, they they're not allowed to fill the forms for you. Uh, but they will give you a hand on applying for the visa and all the bureaucratic stuff. <coughs> uh, about the language proficiency test, um, 
That I do not remember. Of course, you're a native English speaker, so it would be logical that you do not have to um, prove your language proficiency, but I don't remember this, uh, you know, 100% sure. So just, you know, make sure to check this from uh, the education team. However, of course, since um, because you would be applying through um, the education pathway program, that is graduating from the pathway program is already enough to prove your Engli English proficiency in the field. So I don't think you need to do a English language proficiency test, uh, you know, after the program at, at least. Um, and um, and if, if you apply for the pathway program and get accepted, do you have to apply for the degree program at Arkara as well? No. So basically, if, you, if and when you graduate from the program itself, the pathway program, you will get automatically admitted to the Ar Arkara program as long as you have, uh, um, uh, if you graduate from the program with specific points. So you know you don't have to apply for the program specifically or, uh, you know, um, uh, separately, what I, what I was uh, trying to say. <coughs> but yeah, definitely, definitely recommend the Pathway program. I think it's a really, really cool opportunity. Uh, then uh, one more question about, uh, from uh, Mr. G. I already have health insurance in the European Union that is paid for by my employer and is connected to my current visa. Do you know which health insurance options I have if I want to study in Finland? And will I most likely need to get a different insurance? Um, no, I don't think so. So if you have already a uh, European Union uh, healthcare he health insurance... Um, I think that should be enough. Uh, again, you need to check this from the education team when you apply for when you are doing the program. But my understanding is that you do not need to get a separate um, uh, insurance if your current insurance is um, in the European Union. So when you have, uh, exp to explain this to everyone, so if you did not know, it, when uh, if you come to study in Finland, you need to have a uh, personal insurance, health, health insurance to cover your uh, medical costs. And uh, these have to be accepted by the university, I think. Uh, I don't remember who, who is uh, regulating this. However, so basically they need to be international health insurances. Health insurances. And uh, there's multiple European con um, companies that provide this. I don't remember the exact names, but uh, this is based on this, I don't think that you need to get a new health insurance if, you <coughs> if you're able to stick with this one. And uh, one more question from Mr. Jim. If I get a student visa for three and a half years uh, for a degree, does that mean that my partner or parent can obtain a visa as well due to family ties for the same amount of time as my student visa? Um, yes, I think so. Uh, at least it's possible for them to apply. However, the more important thing is that you have to... First of all, you have to check from the Finnish Immigration Services website what is considered as a family tie so whether the um, who is considered as your close family is it uh, your uh, for example are your parents considered as your close family um, in in this case um, what do you, you do need to take into account that if they move here they or if they apply for a residence permit uh, to finland they have to be able to have sufficient financial funds to actually live here. So that means that they basically either need to have a job or enough savings in order to live here so that they don't have to um, be... Uh, uh, um, uh, they don't have to, uh, have to uh, go for the social benefit, uh, uh, social safety net, basically, uh, in order to live here. So that's a very important thing to keep in mind, that they have to be financially uh, independent uh, in order to get a uh, uh, residence permit. Next question comes from Blaze uh, Mugabo. Again, awesome to have Blaze here as well. Uh, Blaze is from Rwanda and uh, is applying to Savonia, University of Applied Sciences, to do a bachelor's in mechanical engineering. And um, the first question is, does Kela offer financial support to international students? No, they don't. Um, as a general rule of thumb, there are a couple of very... Um, specific examples that I will not get into because you most likely do not fulfill those um, uh, sp specifics. So no, Kela does not offer any financial support to international students. They're basically only for Finnish nationals. And the second question is, in case I'm applying for my first residence permit for studies and have exactly 6,720 euros as recommended by Migri uh, for one year, for a one year residence permit, will I get it and then in the next year uh, be able to support myself with work? Uh, good question. 
this is also a difficult question. Um, I would say that um, to be honest, I would not re rely on this as a, as a strategy, um, simply because if you if you are if you are relying on getting a job <laughs> that pays enough for your living cost and your tuition fee from the second year onwards, uh, it is going to be extremely difficult, especially considering that you would be a bachelor student in mechanic, a uh, bachelor student, <coughs> meaning that you will not be able to get a high enough paying job in your second year, for your second year, or actually you would already need to get it in your first year because you will have to pay your tuition for your second year before the second year starts. So you would need to already have the money for the second year before the second year starts. So mean that means that you would start need to start working already during the first year. And as a first year bachelor student uh, who doesn't speak Finnish, it is going to be extremely, extremely difficult, if not impossible, to find a part-time job, considering that you are only allowed to work for 25 hours per week on average. Um, so it's going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible to actually uh, get a job that pays you enough to save money for the second year tuition and the living costs. I have a video about this explaining this. I actually calculate the numbers with Excel, so it's I go to a lot of detail about it, about this. Um, but uh, um, so I recommend that you check that out. But uh, this is a general answer that I, I give to everyone. Uh, the next question comes co comes from, and I'm sorry I butcher your name, uh, uh, Gerge Batia, ba Batiai, Gerge Batiai, who is from Hungary, and uh, who is uh, he's still in high school, but is interested in doing a bachelor's in uh, maritime management. Nice, uh, in uh, Satakunta University of Applied Sciences. Awesome. And uh, the question is, hey Oliver. Hello, hello to you as well. My name is Gerge, and I would like to ask you about what kind of an education or schools are required to apply as a sea captain in Finland. Uh, that's a really good and interesting question, and I have actually, at some point, I actually looked it up, looked this up. But to be honest, I don't remember anymore. Um, let's see. Hmm... So, so if I'm if I'm not mistaken, you actually simply need to have a mm, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. I'm I'm actually not completely sure. Um but I would say that you would... I think that you actually just need the degree. If I'm... Completely... If I'm correct. Um, I might not be. I'm not completely sure. Uh, and I would need to actually uh, jump into to the to Google to actually look for the, the information. Um, however... Um, All right. Actually, on the SAMC website, it says, "Thus, seafarers with a Scandinavian Scandinavian degree in maritime studies are a, are in high demand, especially for management level positions. Depending on their excuse me, depending on their work experience, they often work as officers, chief officers, or masters on board the ships. Later in their career, many seafarers seek employment on shore. Typical typical land based careers include work and port organizations or in uh, stew." Doring companies, two Doring companies, insure organizations of shipping companies or in chartering agencies. So basically, I, if I understood correctly, you actually just need the bachelor's degree in maritime management uh, to, or m in maritime, I'm not completely sure of the specific name of the degree, but that should be enough for you to become a sea captain in Finland. Don't quote me on this again. It's a very specific question, but this is what I've understood. Uh, please make your own research. But uh, I, I think that if you're looking at, at SAMC and their degree, you're in the correct path currently. Um, the next question comes from uh, Andres from Peru, uh, who is uh, applying to study a bachelor's in healthcare in the next application period. And the question is, I've got bad grades at school, but I got good grades at Ammatikol in my country, or that's a uh, vocational school. And I want to study at Laura University. Would they accept me? Um, 
unfortunately, Andres, it's impossible for me to say. Um, it depends on the school and uh, the specific uh, rec uh, the specific requirements that they have for each of their degrees. So it's impossible for me to say. I would recommend that you contact uh, any of the uh, universities of applied sciences where you want to do a degree, uh, depending on the degree, uh, about this. Uh, one other option is also to go to Edunation, edu, e, so edunation.co, uh, what I, the company that I've been speaking about. They, for example, uh, have offer a pathway to do a nursing degree in Finland, a bachelor's in nursing, and uh, they know about this quite a lot. So I would recommend that you connect or contact them uh, directly. A uh, couple more questions. Uh, we have uh, one from Ahmed from Egypt. Uh, who's uh, interested in doing a master's in biomaterials and tissue engineering. Nice. <laughs> That's really cool. Interesting. Um, the question is, how should I look for a part-time job in Finland? Um, uh, in addition, is it necessary to know Finnish in order to work in the healthcare system? Um, and uh, <clears throat> what are the Finnish nationality requirements? The Finnish uh, citizenship requirements, I do not remember. You would need to look them up from the Finnish Immigration Services website. Um, uh, I have never actually gone through the requirements myself. Uh, Topoyo, what's up? Welcome to the stream. Awesome to have you here, have you here again. Um, and about the part-time jobs, I actually have a video about part-time jobs and how, where to look for them on the channel. So please check that video out. I, in the video, I actually go through, I think, 15 different tips on how to um, find a job, part-time job as a student in Finland. Again, it's in the, in, in the channel, so go and uh, check that out. And uh, in addition, is it necessarily to know Finnish in order to work in the healthcare system? This depends on the job that you apply for. So if you apply for specific, for example, uh, nursing positions, then yes, you need to speak Finnish. However, if you, for example, apply for different, um, you know, healthcare industry in, in you know, ba the back office, like in the research departments, like in your case, biomaterials or tissue engineering, then absolutely not. These are heavily internationalized industries and their international companies. Most of the employees that you would be working for would most likely be international companies, as at least in my opinion. So I would say that absolutely not. Uh, it's absolutely useful. It's going to help you in, in terms of your integration into the uh, society. Um, uh, however, I would not uh, think that you, you would need Finnish in order to do well. Uh, the next question comes from Gregory from Russia. Awesome to have you here uh, uh, once again. And Gregory is interested in doing an, a bachelor's in IT at Laurea University of Applied Sciences. And the question is actually, is Laurea a good university of applied sciences? Yes, it is. Enough said. Yes, it is. It's a good good school. He he uh, definitely recommend it. <laughs> um, the next question comes from Kazim Nadim Hossain, uh, again from Bangladesh. And uh, the question is, there's a couple of questions actually. Uh, first, thanks a lot for answering my previous question. You're most welcome. That's the reason we're doing these live streams. Now I've, uh, I have mo three more questions. If you can then kindly give, these, give an answer to this. Um, number one, what about job opportunities for business administration, especially for enterprise planning resource? Um, Good question. Uh, I do not know about the enterprise planning resources uh, field or this um, specialization, so it's impossible for me to say. However, you know, ERP is, uh, you know, everyone uses some kind of an ERP system anyways, so my guess is would be that there's plenty of job opportunities. Uh, every single b bigger company that I've worked for has some kind of an ERP, <laughs> ERP system, as we call them. Uh, so definitely you are going to have job opportunities. Uh, it's difficult for me to say what kind of jobs and where to find them. Um, again, I have video about where to find part-time jobs as a student. The same applies for graduates as well. Uh, you can find the video in my ch uh, on the channel. So go ahead and check that out. But I would say that de definitely ERP or ent enterprise planning uh, resources absolutely you you will have job or op job opportunities however if you do a bachelor's in business administration that's uh, you know ERP, erp will not be your only option even if you master uh, if, even if you major in erps you will definitely have have opportunities to work in other uh, specializations as well so in business there's a bunch of job opportunities both part-time full-time uh permanent uh and um uh, temporary 
uh, during school, after school. So absolutely, doing a degree in business in Finland is always good. And uh, it's not always easy to find, especially those first jobs, especially as a student. But once you get your you know career rolling and you get your first jobs, uh, then it gets easier over time. So yeah, definitely. Uh, the second question is, what about the part-time job in the, during the current situation with COVID? Um, it's actually getting better. So the Finnish recruitment market hit a wall last March, so 2020 March, uh, because of COVID. And it was completely frozen over the summer. And uh, for example, last year, again, 2020, most of the summer jobs were cancelled because, co- because of COVID. But now, since basically every single company especially, you know, in the business uh, industry, they have already gotten used to working online, especially with their, even with their current staffing. Um, <coughs> actually, the recruitment market has almost bounced completely back to to normal. So I, I would say that the job market situation is is pretty good if we're talking about jobs in your field. However, you know, part-time jobs in the service sector, for example, like restaurants, bars, gr- grocery stores, etc., it's it's really difficult. But it's not just difficult for Finnish, uh, uh, for international people. It's also difficult for Finnish people, simply because the market is not there yet, uh, and people don't go to restaurants, people don't go to bars uh, as much, at least. So there's not that mu- uh, there's not that much of a need for part-time employees, uh, which means that there's not that many jobs. So, but if you're looking for part-time jobs in your field, then absolutely. Uh, then third question about Kokkola is Kokkola city lower? in costs than any other cities. Um, difficult to say, it la- it's at least way cheaper than the capital region that I can say. Uh, really cannot comment anymore here because I, again, don't have personal experience with Kokkola. Uh, the next question uh, comes from, again, from Gerga. And uh, the question is, uh, hi Oliver, I would like to ask you about what kind of schools or education is required to be a sea captain in Finland. Got that already, cool. Uh, the next question comes from Kashish. And uh, the question is scope of tourism in Finland. Uh, this is a massively wide topic, so I cannot give you a you know d- direct answer here. Of course, tourism is extremely important for the Finnish economy. Uh, for example, Lapland is is built with tourism. So if you want to do a field, uh, if you want to do a degree in tourism in Finland, you will definitely find work there. But uh, this is way too wide of a topic for me to you know talk about because I would need to talk about this for hours. So. Uh, if you have any more specific questions, uh, you you know, let me know. But I would say that getting a degree in tourism in Finland is definitely a good idea. Uh, the next question comes from Topoyo, again from Lesotho. Uh, Lesotho, and uh, Topoyo is a regular on the channel. Awesome to have you here. Uh, I know that the time difference is a bit difficult. And uh, the question is, hi Oliver, glad I made it today, even though not not on time. No worry. Um, I missed a lot, and I'm planning on binge watching all the videos I missed the we- on weekend. Cool. Awesome. Uh, I noticed there aren't a lot of healthcare, health related courses one can apply to through education. Do you think, the w- uh, w- what do you think, will they be working with other universities like Tur- like Turku and uh, the University of Helsinki anytime soon? Um, really good question. Uh, of course, I don't know how to comment here. I, I, I don't have, e- have any, in, in you know, insider information. So, you know, just a disclaimer. Um <coughs> really hard for me to say. I really hope that they would start working with them. But of course, considering like uh, the University of Helsinki, they already get quite a lot of applicants through their own system. So I'm not sure um, uh, whether they and education will work in the future. Uh, however, um, it, it is a bit of a problem that the that there's not that many degrees in healthcare that you can ap- that you could apply for um, not only through education but you know in Finland uh, in general um, but I, I would definitely check out the edu- uh, the degrees uh, the problem is that there I think most of them are bachelor's level degrees that they that you can apply for for through education in terms of he- health care uh, so there's not really anything for you that would be suitable so I would say that the the um, uh, degree in, in uh, transmed at the University of, Hel- University of Helsinki is still the uh, choice for you. All right. Uh, the next question c- question comes from Alexa from Nepal, and the question is: um, I'm sorry, uh, Alexa is uh, applying for the uh, a bachelor's in engineering at the Tampere University of Applied Sciences, and the question is: I gave uh, the online exam on February third uh, of this week. Awesome. So that's yesterday. Nice. Um, 
uh, which was a written exam. So now if I passed in that, there will be an online interview. Or so, so the next step would be an online interview. Can you please tell me what sort of questions will be asked in that interview? Because I need to pass that to be selected to study. Uh, Alex, I'm so sorry. I, I cannot help you here again. The problem is that the I've never actually been to any, any of these interviews myself. I have no insider information on what kind of questions they would ask. How, but what I would, you know, my gut feeling is that since you have already passed, you know, on, on paper, that you're not good enough on paper, and, and you have most likely, if you pass the written exam, you're then even better on paper. And uh, I, the way that I would approach the interview is from, from the perspective of the university itself. Uh, they already have a bunch of really good applicants on paper that they have, you know, filtered uh, and selected for the interviews. And what they want to know in the interviews or what I would want to know in the interview is why you? Why are you better than everyone else? And not only just why are you better, better academically, but why are you a better option or choice for the university, for the school, uh, compared to everyone else? So what I would I would prepare for questions about why would you why why should you be accepted to the program? Uh, what do you, what are your career um, uh, aspirations? Why do you want to study in Finland? Why do you want to study in um, Tampere University of Applied Sciences? So very specific questions about your motivation, your will. Why do you want to apply there uh, to, and to Finland? And why should they choose you? So I think that this is the only concrete uh, uh, tip that I can give you. Again, disclaimer, please qu don't qu quote me on this. I do not know whether or not these kind of questions will be asked, but I would personally approach this in such a way. Of course, there might be and most likely will be other questions as well. So you need to prepare with more questions as well. However, this would be the def these, these would definitely be topics that I would prepare for uh, personally. Cool. Uh, next question comes from um, uh, Adam from France. Awesome to have you here as well, uh, once again. Uh, uh, the question is, hi, Oliver, I have a few questions. That's fine. Uh, when you start the bachelor's program in economics at Aalto, do you keep the same classmates for the whole program? Uh, or do they change every semester? Uh, that's a very good question. So basically, we don't have classes. Or we don't have, you know... We don't basically have classes in a sense. We only have um, people who started studying at the school at the same time as us. Uh, the, the reason for this is that everyone basically can study at their own pace. And, and quite quickly after you start your studies, once you have done your mandatory courses, you guys will start working on different type of courses and specializations. So everyone will start going to different uh, directions. This means that you will start taking courses with different type, kind of people. Some of them might be the same guys as, as, as you started with. Some might be older, some might be younger. Uh, in some courses, if you are a bachelor student, you might have actually master, you might actually have master students in the same course. So don't consider it, it, it as a class because you don't you don't study the the entire degree at the same time, at the same pace, with the same in the same courses as everyone else. Rather consider that you should get to know those people as your friends, and then you will all start moving in the, uh, slightly different directions and take different kind of courses as time goes by. Uh, however, sure, during the first year you mostly do the same courses because they're, they're all the mandatory courses. However, every even during the first year you can take you know, different paths. For example, someone might not want to do one course, uh, even though it's mandatory, they might want to take it on the next year or the in, in the next year, second year, and they might replace that with some other courses. Uh, and he would be the, he or she would be the only one taking that course out of all of you who started at the same time. So for example, in, in, in terms of my, myself, when I did my bachelor's, uh, yeah, sure, we did a uh, the, the same people who started the school at the same time as I did, we basically did the same courses for the first year. 
However, and uh, some some people didn't pass them on the first try, so they had to redo the courses. Um, and uh, of course, because you, if you have to redo a course, that takes time, so that's away from another course. Um, so that's already you, you can see that your you know path paths are differentiating. But then it, during the second year, people started to specialize in different uh, majors, and uh, we basically split up completely. But anyways, we're st still going to the same school, so we don't really consider those as classes, uh, as, as you put it. Um, how many people are there in the program, uh, the economics program ac approximately? Uh, I actually don't know. That's a good question. I, I actually don't know. It's uh, the, the, This is always program specific. So some, some programs are smaller, some are big, bigger. Um, so uh, hard to say. And how many people are there per classroom? Uh, depends on the course. So some basic courses uh, during the first year, you might have 300 people, depending on the uh, degree that you're doing. Uh, so if you're doing a bachelor's in, in uh, business in Finnish, then you will have all the first year students in the same uh, classes most of the first year or throughout most of the first year. And that means that you will have three, uh, 300 people in the same class. Uh, but then on the other hand, um, the further you get in your courses, uh, the smaller they will be. Uh, and then, for example, language courses are always with smaller groups. So 20, you know, 15, 20, 30 people at maximum. Um, but then, uh, for example, when you get to your major um, uh, or when you get further in your specialization, you might have classes where you have um, 10 people. And they're like more seminar type where you actually don't listen to the lecture, but you rather spend the entire course just discussing and, de uh, and debating the issues. So depends a lot on the course that you take. Cool. Sakura actually, actually taking a, uh, mentioning a good point. Uh, we're actually at 60 likes. That is awesome. I think that's a record, I think, for the channel. <laughs> really, really cool. Um, awesome guys, I know that there's a couple of questions already that have come to the form, but I'm, we just crossed the three hour mark, and so we've been going for three hours, I'm actually completely tired, uh, I'm not sure if you can see my eyes are almost closed, uh, and, um, uh, my, my throat is a bit sore, so I think that I will leave it here for this today. Thank you so much for joining the stream. Again, if you uh, value what I'm doing here on the channel, if, if you thought that this live stream was valuable and it gave you information, do smash the like button. Uh, and uh, if you have not yet, for some reason, subscribe to the channel. I recommend that you subscribe for the channel for future content. And uh, remember to put on all notifications if you want to get notified when I post new videos and uh, when I go live. And finally, uh, if you are not yet a member of um, the Discord server, do consider joining. We have a link to the Discord server in the description box below. The idea of the server is to build a community of people uh, studying and working in Finland. And, you know, we have uh, a lot of really cool discussions there about studying, living and working in Finland. So uh, that would be awesome. Um why saying that um, Oliver, your uh, email address is not visible. Uh, can you say it out li live? Uh, li can you say it out uh, out loud? Out loud, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus, live. Um, I actually have my business email in my regular video description boxes. However, I do not uh, answer to people on uh, with emails uh, because there's so many different um, there's so many uh, uh, emails coming in. Uh, all the time that I'm not able to uh, respond to people via email. So if you want to contact me or if you have any questions for me, please contact me uh, through the Discord server. So join the server again. Um, uh, check it out uh, through through the description box below. Awesome. Uh, once again, thanks guys so much for joining us. And uh, uh, Evgenia, I will have those behind the scene videos coming once I get that darn thesis done. It's It's... I've been working on it almost 20, 20 for seven for the two last two weeks. I'm I'm so pissed and I'm so f full of it, 